and welcome back to the Cool Fear channel. I'm your host, Jesse the Bat Madrigal, aka the Buff Collector, and welcome to episode 33 of Coffee and Toys here on the Cool Fears channel. I hope you all have had a great week. We have some great toy news to talk about. We're going to definitely talk about some coffee and toys live and so much more. But first, if you're new, then welcome. This channel's all about cool action figures, analyzing them, hunting them, taking pics of them, and of course, playing with them. If that's your sort of thing, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And while you're at it, why don't you go ahead and hit that bell notification icon so you stay notified when I do upload new content. If you do enjoy this video or any other videos that I put out, please remember to give them a thumbs up. It really helps the channel grow. With all of that out of the way, guys, once again, welcome to episode 33 of Coffee and Toys. And like I said, guys, we actually have some decent amount of toy news to talk about this week, which is pretty exciting because the last few weeks have been kind of short. But, you know, it can't always be a full toy week, you know. I mean, as it is, toy prices are going up. So I'm kind of happy that we're not getting too much toy news right now uh, because as it is, you know, previous pre-orders are starting to come in and whatnot. So I'm kind of content with what we have at the moment. But it's always good to just get a little bit of toy news. So we'll definitely go over that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start off with this week's Coffee and Toys Live, guys. So if you missed out on this week's Coffee and Toys Live, it was with special guest Real Shift from YouTube. If you don't know who he is, he is a movie reviewer over on YouTube and he also is Rocco the Great's co-host when he live streams and does all sorts of great stuff online. And uh, speaking of Rocco the Great, I know this is actually going up two days later because I filmed this on Friday. But on Friday, he is dropping his latest figure, Fat Cap Joe. So uh, unfortunately, if you're seeing this, uh, most likely sold out. I'm thinking it's going to sell out within that hour that he drops it because uh, he's decided to drop it randomly on a live stream. You know, I saw him post some tease pics. And I was like, yo, you know, you want to send over some stuff, any info on when you're going to potentially be releasing it and stuff. And he straight up was like, you know what, I'm actually going to drop it tonight. So, yeah, this was, I guess, up for order for an hour or so. I'll be watching the live stream while I'm at the gym training and stuff. So getting back to the guest, Real Shift Joe, he came on and we had a great conversation about movies and old school movies and new school movies, practical versus CGI, and a big, great conversation of, of course, Batman. So definitely stay tuned to the end of this podcast to catch that interview. And uh, also, guys, once again, the live download kind of fucked up. Uh, so about 30 minutes uh, or no, was it 30 minutes? About 20 minutes left in the in the interview. It kind of like got all weird and janky. So uh, it actually stopped, you know, loading and stuff. The download was just corrupt. So I wasn't able to get the full download. Uh, so what I had to do is go back and screen record the last few uh, 20 minutes of the interview. So that's why the last 20 minutes of the interview, the format changes and you'll see a little bit of the comments and a little more stuff on the screen opposed to the original uh, download where it's just a clean download and whatnot. So just so you guys know, but it was a great interview and it actually went by fast, but it was a long one. So, you know, it was one of those that lasted almost two hours, but it felt like we were talking for like maybe 30 minutes. Next thing you know, I look and it's like almost two hours. So uh, it was a great conversation. Thank you once again to Joe of Real Shift for coming on to the show. I really do appreciate it. So why don't we go ahead and start talking future Coffee and Toys guests now, as we always do after we discuss this week's current Coffee and Toys guests. Uh, unfortunately guys, next week we will be taking the week off from both Coffee and Toys Live and the podcast itself because um i don't know if you can tell by my attire but uh i will actually be celebrating my birthday on the beautiful island of maui so i will not be home and i film these on fridays and i won't have all my you know equipment and stuff and also i'm not going to spend the time that i spend editing this all day saturday all day saturday in Hawaii so uh, unfortunately I am going to be taking the week off of both Coffee and Toys Live and the podcast uh, but we will return the following week May 4th with Can't Kill Chewy if you don't know who Can't Kill Chewy is he is a YouTuber here on YouTube obviously and uh, he puts up a lot of great top 10 lists regarding Star Wars Black Series vintage collection their worth their releases their um, you know top most sought after uh, top worst you know different fun stuff and he always throws in some great humor in his list so it's a great time to watch if you haven't checked him out go ahead and check him out 
But if you also follow him over on Instagram, he's kind of like a toy shiz. He'll keep you up to date on all the latest reveals, pre-orders, releases, and uh, newly in stock items online, uh, you know, up to date and current, you know. So here we kind of go over it after everything. Him, if you want it like instantly, if you want to know when stuff goes up instantly, like it went back up for pre-order or went back into stock i highly recommend you following him but uh also i may do a spontaneous random very short coffee and toys live on wednesday we'll see how i'm feeling on that trip i'll probably forget and never even think about it and next thing you know it, i'll be tuesday and i'll be back and I'm like oh yeah i never went live but anyways when we come back we still have plenty of guests lined up so after can't kill chewy i will actually be speaking to the loyal subjects a toy company which always gets me excited because it's a toy company you know why wouldn't i be excited to talk to a toy company and more so an la based toy company you know so that's pretty cool so after them i will be speaking to visual approach photo so he does some amazing toy photography over on instagram so definitely check him out if you haven't already and then after him i will be having go figure go on the show so super excited for all the future guests super excited for uh this next coming week to kind of relax and take it easy uh you know i've been don't worry guys i've been working hard i've got plenty of content to go out throughout the week for you guys uh it's just the podcast isn't going to happen next week and the live show probably isn't going to happen so other than that though all the same content will go up and uh it's already pretty much up uh, so thankfully, you know, like I said, I've been working and been doing a lot of stuff. So that way you guys can, you know, still get your content and I can be on vacation, you know, relaxed knowing that I I'm covered, you know, so that's always a good feeling, right? Because I was even talking to one of my clients, uh, earlier this morning when they were leaving and I was telling them, you know, uh, they're a new client. So I was like, Oh, you know, I'll look over your, your new client evaluation and I'll get you the meal plan before the weekend ends, you know? And they're like, Oh no, it's your birthday. Don't worry about it. And I was like, no, no, no. I want to get it done. So that way I don't have to think about it on my birthday or on my weekend or on my vacation and then get back and have to worry about it. So that's just the way I roll personally, but yeah, super excited to speak to all of those future guests. So next up real quick, guys, let's talk the Batman once again. Uh, it came out and dropped on HBO Max and digital. And if you guys are aware, I'm sure you guys are. My podcast with my Batman review took absolutely fucking forever to come out. And that was simply because of technical issues for some odd reason uh every time i would edit it my phone would just say it cannot export cannot export and it would go literally almost all the way and it was an almost three hour podcast so it wasn't like a, a short one so it would take almost two to three hours to export and after those two to three hours my phone would tell me there was an error and it couldn't export and all that stuff so that happened believe it or not twice and it wasn't until i wised up that third time and i literally split it up into i shit you not i think like eight separate pieces um it worked i had to split it up into eight i had to split it up into eight separate pieces i had to edit each separate piece by itself i had to export each separate piece by itself and once i had each separate piece exported i downloaded it all or i put it all together and then i downloaded it and exported it all and it worked so i don't know what was going on why i wouldn't just do it all together why it had me do all this crazy nonsense but in the end it got up and stuff so yeah but my review for the batman was in that episode which was making it even more frustrating because i absolutely loved that movie and i still do in fact i've been watching it on repeat since it came out on hbo max like literally since it came out on monday i've seen it i shit you not seven or eight times possibly more by the time this comes out on sunday because uh, i'm gonna be on a six hour plane ride and uh that's a three hour movie so that gives me two more uh, times to watch it plus all day saturday and friday the rest of this day you know so definitely have a few more chances to watch it a few more times before this goes up on sunday so i'll say i'm gonna land on 10 let's see i'm at seven now eight nine no i'm gonna say 12 times by sunday but uh and that's not even including the amount of times i saw it in theaters i believe that was five or six times so many times i lost track so anyways guys are you enjoying the batman what did you guys think you know i mean like i said you guys could probably tell by the way i'm speaking on it uh i absolutely loved it uh honestly it's not a perfect movie it's not a perfect batman movie but there's just something about that movie that just brings you into that world maybe it's the runtime and the length that you're with those characters for so long it just feels like you're a part of that world and when it's over 
you just want to jump right back in. So that's just my personal feelings on it. And it still hasn't been Dark Knight in my top five list. That still remains my top five. Although this is probably number six on my list of top favorite movies of all time. So uh, that says something because it knocked out some other great movies. But anyways, guys, moving on from the Batman, let's go ahead and talk about some Batman. <laughs> moving on to this week's toy haul, as you can see, it is definitely Batman centric and uh greenery centric we'll go ahead and get into this last week or uh, no no not last week but the previous week because this came in on saturday but two weeks ago we had this guy on the table as a new uh statue here on the table and i told you guys i had the batman one on the way and here it is and man is it a masterpiece so this is the cryptozoic life-size statue batman hand and batarang and as you can see it is fucking fantastic so we're gonna go ahead and put it right here next to the joker's hand and you know what they just look so damn good together i think that's gonna be the podcast table right there you know we're probably gonna push this guy out a little bit more there put that there and hopefully this actually looks pretty good on camera i can't see currently so uh i won't know or maybe we'll move batman's hand that way i don't know i don't want to move it too far over there right now because i don't have too good of a reach and i'm afraid that i'll knock it off the table and these are ceramic uh so you don't want to have these drop uh the one thing about the battering is it doesn't sit in too well unless you really lock it in place but even still if you just tap it it kind of just falls out so that's my only gripe with this statue but other than that it is i mean it's literally life size here's my hand next to it in the same position and as you can see it's about the same size as my hand so you can't get any more life size than that so that's super cool and cannot believe how amazing these things look so yeah moving on i recently actually just went to target before filming this i had a client cancel in the morning and uh, so i had an hour to kill and i was like you know what why don't i go to target i had to go to walmart to make a return anyways and targets that way and walmart's didn't have shit today uh but target Target did. So I want to go ahead and talk about the greenery right here. And that is because, as you guys probably know, I am a toy photographer and I do have a jungle diorama. And I think this would make some really good greenery in that diorama. I bought two uh, because I was thinking of putting a few of these together and making kind of like a field, but I wasn't sure. So I only bought two to kind of test it out and see how it goes. Uh, and then go from there. You know, if I need to buy more, I'll buy more. They were only $3, so look at your local Target if you need some of this stuff, guys. Uh, $3 for this whole, you know, square. I want to say it's probably a foot by foot. No, it's probably like a foot by six inches. I don't know. It's it's a pretty decent square. So, uh, yeah. So, I got two of these. Like I said, I'm going to try out laying them together and seeing how it works. See if figures even stand in it. If not, I'll probably just keep one and rip it all apart and just, you know, put it all throughout my uh, diorama and display so next up i did hit up the neca section and man did they have some good stuff today they had the new mcfarland toys retro 66 penguin and the new neca toys aces high iron maiden eddie so why don't we go ahead and start off with this guy and then we'll go ahead and talk about him so i had no intentions of jumping into this line and i somehow jumped in and so since I jumped in, I decided why not go ahead and just get the figures, you know? So I found Penguin, and I did actually find the boxing Batman and the Catwoman as well. Passed on the boxing gloved Batman. Uh, I didn't pass on the Joker and Batman in swimming trunks for a specific reason. And that is because, one, I found these on my last trip to Maui. And uh, two, I'm actually going to be taking them back with me to Maui to take some uh, fun beach photos of them running together in the sand, you know, all romantic like and whatnot. So that's why I went ahead and picked these guys up. But I don't think I'm going to be getting the boxing Riddler and the boxing Batman. Uh, I just I don't see the need for it. And I don't have a boxing ring to display them in. I have my Hawaii display to display these guys in. So that kind of works out. Uh, but I don't have a boxing ring, so I don't think I'm going to get those. But I did need the Penguin to round out my rogues gallery uh, thus far. You know, we have Riddler, Joker, and now we have Penguin. Um, I can't really remember who the other main uh, baddie was. I think it was just those three plus Catwoman in the original movie. So that's pretty much it. I don't think 
I'll collect any more of these figures at this point now that I have all the rogues that I actually remember. Obviously, there's plenty of rogues throughout the TV series, you know, like Egghead and all that stuff. Uh, but like I said, I have no attachment to them, so I kind of have no want or need for them in any shape or form. But like I said, uh, you know, I did grow up watching the movie and Cesar Romero's Joker is in it. And so is Frank Gorshin's uh, Riddler and whoever played the Penguin. And so that's why I wanted them specifically. And so, yeah, with that being said, guys, why don't we go ahead and move on into uh, talking about this guy. But actually, I forgot to mention, this guy will be this week's unboxing. Obviously, he's still in package and stuff. So, that will be this week's unboxing. But next, let's go ahead and talk about the NECA Toys Aces High Iron Maiden Eddie because, man, is he a badass figure. And NECA did an amazing job on this guy. So, if you didn't know, I am a huge rock and roll fan. And, in fact, Iron Maiden is the band that kind of really got me into it you know growing up i really didn't like music because all music was to me was what my parents listened to plus what they allowed me to listen to which wasn't really the best stuff but it was so i was just kind of whatever on music i was never like oh yeah music music you know it was you can put it on i can put it on it was okay you know it was in the background it was noise and whatnot but something changed when guitar hero 3 came out um well the fact that i got an xbox changed um but i played that game and i was introduced to a whole new world of music i had no idea that any of this music had existed i knew a few of them had because of through classic rock stations and whatnot but there was a lot other music on that game that i had no idea existed and uh one of them the one that really stuck with me number of the beast by iron maiden i know you guys think oh it's the satanic nut it has nothing to do with the lyrics actually in fact usually when i listen to music it's the guitar that gets me you know you see a guitar back here in the background and everything it's because i play guitar that's my favorite instrument and um so i always listen for the guitar if the guitar sucks i'm instantly out uh you know so that's just me personally so the guitar riff on number of the beast is just one of the most badass guitar riffs uh, and so I instantly fell in love and I wanted to know more. I wanted to, you know, follow this band, listen to this band. There's only one problem. I was a private school kid. And if you think my mom was going to let her private school son that attends uh, Catholic school to listen to number of the beast, which is essentially a song about, you know, um, uh, the lead singer coming across the devil one night, uh, she yeah it wasn't gonna happen so uh the way i was actually able to get around this is i had this little mp3 that actually had a recording function so you could actually record and i found the no cheat or the no dying cheat for guitar hero and i plugged that in and i turned on number of the beast on expert so that way it sounded the best it could that way you know usually if you went easy like it would make the guitar a little slower it would make it sound a little less but on expert it sounded exactly the way it was and I hit record and I let it play through. And with the no dying cheat, you know, I was able to listen to the whole song. And that's how I was able to listen to Iron Maiden, that one song for the longest time. Uh, unfortunately, in Guitar Hero, if you're not actively trying to play, uh, it kind of cuts the guitar parts at certain points. So I missed out on a lot. So when I finally actually got the album and I listened to the whole song, I was even more blown away, you know, by the stuff that I didn't get to hear. Uh, when he got cut from the game when you weren't trying to play it. So, uh, yeah, it was an experience. But in the long run, in the end, I got to listen to Iron Maiden. My mom realized I'm not going to become some satanic devil worshiper because I like Iron Maiden. Uh, and so, yeah, but now NECA Toys makes Iron Maiden Eddie figures. And if you don't know who Eddie is, he is essentially their mascot who is... Uh, on the cover of every album and single that they put out he basically changes his attire to suit that album or that single and uh, yeah he's essentially just a zombie and uh, he's one of the most famous rock heavy metal icon mascots ever uh, this guy is awesome so super cool to have this guy Nick has actually been at this for quite some time I think and um, I think there's a power slave version of him out 
currently and i definitely will be picking them up if i come across them uh but yeah there is uh there's other you know figures from them back in the day but they were not soft goods they were more statues you know i think NECA did put them out you know because i have a few up there on my shelf namely the killers one uh it's based off their second album so this is off a single this is based off a single aces high which is one of my personal favorite songs because when i was finally able to listen to them uh the first album i bought the first song on that album was aces high and it was a live version and it just fucking kicked ass and so definitely one of my favorite songs by them and uh, one of the best openings to any rock show so yeah super awesome so why don't i go ahead and pull him forward so that way we can get a nice closer look at him and look at the detailing in his face and in his outfit it's just beautiful i absolutely love it now the only issue is where to put him where is he gonna fit in in my collection but i think he's gonna go with my neck of universal monsters i think that's where he'll fit in best so that wraps up this week's toy haul guys so why don't we go ahead and move on into this week's toy news but first thank you so much to this channel sponsor v rare store check them out for all your funk pop anime and pokemon card needs and of course use code cool figures at checkout for 10 percent off your order five dollar flat rate shipping on all funko pop orders starting off with some mezco toys news they only had one thing and one thing to say but two things to release because they did release the Crick 13 troop builder pack with two of the most hard to get uh mezco Crick figures blood force and the pale driver so you get one of each in this pack for 150 and you essentially get all the same accessories that you would have gotten with those figure releases uh, had you gotten them originally. And like I said, these are the hardest to find and slash get because the red one, the Blood Force one, was an Asia Goal exclusive, which is really hard for American collectors to get so uh that was a very hard one to get and it also sold out in about three minutes so yeah that <laughs> yeah and then there's the pale drivers so you get one of those as well i don't really remember exactly the you know the whole history behind that one uh but i do know it's one of the more harder to get and so here they offer both of them in one pack so for 150 you do get both figures all their accessories and yeah essentially you can build a crick army anyways guys let's go ahead and move on into some mcfarland toys news so once again not too much news from them you know it seems like uncle todd's been a little quiet lately you know i don't know what's been going on uh it seems like you know before he was just constantly releasing you know new images and new teases and everything and now he's kind of gone on the quiet front but he hasn't been that silent because he did release a tease for the blackest night death storm i have absolutely no idea who this figure is or who this character is uh but obviously he's part of the blackest night nice storyline and he looks pretty menacing you know i have to admit you could probably fit him into any kind of zombie supernatural kind of display uh you know he just has that fit and look to it it doesn't look like he's specifically dc or a superhero property entity and stuff like that so Cool figure but uh definitely a pass for me um next up they did show off the blackest night green lantern once again really cool looking figure but also an easy pass for myself because i just personally am not a big green lantern fan and um i don't need another one i have one mezco one and i'm good with that i don't need a mcfarland one so that is it in terms of mcfarland toys news like i said guys not too much but uh he didn't want to go, you know, quiet this week, so he did give us a little, little something. So, moving on, thank you so much also to the Old School Lab Supplements for helping sponsor this video. Check them out over on Amazon at Old School Lab Supplements and use code JESSEM12 for 12% off your order. Thank you also to Legend Footwear for helping sponsor this video as well. Check them out over at legendfootwear.com and use code JESSEM underscore LGND for 10% off your order so moving on to some NECA news uh no new reveals or anything however uh they did announce and put up their new NECA TMNT Casey and April Farm 2 pack on walmart.com as well as for international uh collectors today on Friday the other for you know U.S. ones went up I think Wednesday or Thursday and it was a pass for me i i had the option to buy it it was right there and you know what it's just not worth fucking 60 bucks for me i'm sorry it's just not it's it's just not there's just no point in me paying 60 dollars for two figures 
that I already have and for a few little accessories that are just going to look cool on a shelf. So as much as I love that line, like I keep saying, guys, this is going to be the year of picking and choosing for us collectors because prices are going up, but value is staying the same, if not going down. So that's one good example of prices going up and value staying the same. You know, we're not getting anything more than what we would have gotten in the $50 two pack. In fact, I've seen that they've already marked up $50 two packs from previous releases to 60 because I believe on one of the toy YouTube channels that I watch where they go hunting, they found a Hamato Yoshi and a Rokusaki two pack on clearance slash sale for $50. I paid $50 full price for that set. So that means they raised a set's price that was previously released to $60. So I don't know, but yeah, it just wasn't worth my money. And so, yeah, like I said, the year of picking and choosing. And so I went ahead and passed. Like I said, I have an April. I have two cases. I have a mask and I have the one that they re-released without the mask. So I'm good. I don't need a third Casey and a second April. So as cool as some of those accessories were or are, like I said, just to sit on a shelf, just to sit in my accessory tray, not worth 60 bucks. But anyways, guys, let's go ahead and move on and talk about some Super 7 news because they themselves also did have a little tease, much like McFarlane. Nothing too much, nothing too big, but just a little something. And that is the Ren and Stimpy Super 7 Ultimates. So, yeah, if you were a fan of this classic cartoon from the 90s, check them out and... Let me know, is it worth your money? Because I'm a fan of the Animaniacs and I passed on the Animaniacs from Super 7 because, I don't know, it's just, I love that show, but it's just not a show that I think and feel like I need figures for, you know? There's a lot of properties that I love and enjoy that I don't need figures from, you know? So, um, yeah, that's probably one of them that I don't need figures from, you know, Animaniacs. As cool as they look, like, trust me, they look cool and I was like, wow, those look really cool. I would love to have them. But I don't need, like, much like, I know we don't need any of this stuff, but, you know, when you look at your collection, you know, and you're serious about looking at your collection, and you have to, you have to really think about it and say, do I need this in my collection? And you can say no, and then don't put it in your collection. It's just the way it is. But anyways, guys, with that being said, why don't we go ahead and move on to marvel legends but first thank you so much to raise energy for also helping sponsor this video check them out over at raiseenergy.com and use code the bat for 10 percent off your order and thank you also to man sports supplements for helping sponsor this video check them out over at mansportsupplements.com and of course use code the bat for 10 percent off your order so marvel legends had a fan first tuesday this week so you know what that means plenty of reveals plenty of pre-orders and plenty of price hikes so yes, they did have a lot of great reveals, I have to admit. It even enticed me, me not being a Marvel Legends collector, but the prices. My God, the prices. So starting off, they did finally re-release or release their interpretation of the Toy Biz Marvel Legends Toad. Now, when you look at it side by side compared to the original one, it really doesn't look like it. And in my opinion, it isn't living up to the hype in my opinion you know i feel like people wanted a more um copycat i guess you could say version of the one that we got with toy biz uh because i've heard, i haven't really heard a lot of excitement behind this one you know and usually when they've announced these toy biz you know remakes you know there's a lot of hoopla around them and whatnot but this one i haven't really heard too much but moving on they did say that they are continuing on the spider verse uh, universe in their collection in their wave in their line whatever you want to call it with spider-man noir now i am not a fan of uh into the spider-verse i just i don't know i'm not a fan of it i just i personally just i'm not a big fan of it just i'm just gonna leave it at that i mean i don't know why i have to give you guys an explanation i'm just not a big fan of it uh, i'm not a fan of the art style i'm not a fan of him jumping through multiverses and all this stuff see and that's the thing maybe that's what it is it's the it's really the multiverse you know i feel like the multiverse is just so damn over fucking used at this point like give it a rest we get it there's a fucking multiverse now everybody has a fucking multiverse and their mother their mother has a multiverse their father has a multiverse you get a multiverse you get a multiverse oprah's handing out multiverses left and right at this point 
I'm over multiverses, so I'm not into the Spider-Verse. I'm not even going to be watching Doctor Strange into the multiverse or multiverse of madness, whatever it's fucking called, because I'm just over that whole thing. You know, it was cool to use here and there. But now they're just like, oh, multiverse is multiverse that, multiverse is multiverse that, multi, 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 Give it a rest. Uh, but to be honest, guys, I'm just not excited for any future Marvel movies until they announce another Spider-Man movie. I wasn't even into and excited for Marvel movies until they introduced Spider-Man back into the MCU or into the MCU, I should say, not back, but into the MCU. So now that he's out for a while, so am I. And I just, you know, they did a great job with Guardians. They did. And we talked about this in, you know, the live show. And that's probably why I'm thinking about it now. And it's coming up. But they did a great job with Guardians in bringing a property in which a lot of people didn't know and making it a beloved franchise, you know. But I feel like the mouse let that get to his head. And he's like, well, we did it with one. We can do it with all these. And it's like, no, you can't. I'm sorry. I just, I personally just don't give a fuck if I didn't grow up with the character. If you created this character six, seven, ten years ago, and I didn't grow up watching, reading these comics and stuff like that, uh, I'm not going to give a fuck about your character. I'm sorry. I'm just not. Just because it's a fancy new character, shiny new character, oh, this, blah, 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 supposed to check this box and blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to like it. I don't care. Same thing with Batman, you know, they try to introduce this new character that was supposedly from his past that, you know, was part of his training and all this shit. And it's like, no, 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 no. We've had 80 plus years of Batman. And in none of that has this guy made an appearance. Don't fucking try to shoehorn him in now. You know, just make him a new ally. Just make him a new enemy. Just don't try and make us feel like we're stupid you know it's just like oh yeah this whole time you guys just haven't realized that he was there like it it pissed me off so much to the point where i just stopped collecting batman comics i was like you know what is this fuck this character fuck this character fuck the writers and uh fuck it all so i just stopped buying comics in terms of that so uh lately the only comic that i am currently reading and buying is the last ronin and i am super excited to finally have the last book uh ironically enough it comes out the day after my birthday and uh thankfully my comic book store was taking pre-orders and i was able to put one in a few weeks ago uh, because i won't be here and not that i ever see a and not that I ever see a monetary value, uh, but I do have all the first editions for this current miniseries run. And I kind of want to get the last one in the first edition. So I was kind of like worried that I wouldn't because, you know, I wasn't going to be around. And obviously by then all first editions would be sold out a week later when I get back. So thankfully I was able to put my pre-order in and I will be able to get the first edition for this final book. And I will read it once and I'll put it away and then I will get a hardback graphic novel so I can reread the story once again and constantly without damaging those first editions. Like I said, I never see a monetary value in them, uh, but they are beautiful books, especially the first issue that I got. I got the Eastman cover where it looks like uh, the last Ronin is kind of like imitating the Dark Knight Returns uh, imagery on the page in Eastman's style. You know, he drew it and everything. I love that comic book cover. And so, yeah, that's really the only one that I actually paid extra for. I think I paid like $30 for that because it was like a one in 10 variant, uh, but it was worth it. But Anyways, talking about monetary value, guys, along with Marvel Legends showing off these new figures, they did also show off some new packaging. And man, are some people pissed. Uh, namely, uh, inbox collectors. And uh, this is the reason why. As you can see, all the new packaging coming out of Marvel is completely sealed up no clear plastic for you to see the pretty pretty toy uh inside the box and uh i understand uh, it seems like a lot of people are getting you know annoyed by this for a multiple number of reasons but mainly obviously inbox collectors uh you know they're pissed uh you know how can i not see my pretty pretty toy how about you open the toy how about you open the box? Going back to what I was saying about Monetary Valley, you know, I mean, I feel like the only real reason uh, that anybody collects on card 
is because they know eventually it's going to be worth something or it could potentially be worth something and they don't want to ruin that chance. I'm not saying it's a quick investment. I'm saying 20, 30, 40 years down the line, but still, it's in your mind. You know what I mean? So open your fucking toys. I mean, unless you have like this thing where you really wanted a toy store when you were younger and, uh, you know, you like the way it looks all lined up and all nicely, you know, like a toy store, then... I'll give you that, but if you have a bunch of sealed toys and boxes and crates and in storage, you're looking for the monetary value in them. And so open your fucking toys, guys. I'm sorry. You know what? I'm not sorry. This is my fucking podcast. I can say whatever the fuck I want. If you guys want to say something about it, start your own goddamn podcast. You know what? So, uh, yeah, open your fucking toys. Stop bitching and complaining about the packaging. I'm sorry for you closed box collectors, but... Open your fucking toys. But I also see the issue from the open box collectors in that maybe you finally find that figure you've been looking for. It's very rare to find. It's hard to find. Distribution is very bad with this figure. And you find one on the shelf. You grab it. You go and you pay for it. You get in the car. You open it up. And it's a figure swap. So I do understand both sides. I'm just like on the closed box collectors. Just. Uh, I just. I don't, I've don't. i never understood that. Why do you collect plastic? Like literally. That's collecting plastic. You can. This is collecting toys. I mean. Okay. I'm going to get a bunch of hate comments now. Because I'm saying this is collecting toys. And what you're doing is not. Blah blah blah. But like I said. This is my podcast. I will say what I want. Uh, and if you take it to heart. Fuck you. I mean, you're listening to a stranger on the internet. I don't know what else to tell you because uh, you can comment whatever you want, but I'm not going to listen to a stranger on the internet. So, uh, yeah, I just, I don't, I have no issue with it, you know? And if I get a figure swap, is it going to suck? Yes, but what am I going to do? Go back to Target, return it myself. So, uh, yeah, that's just the way it is. But anyways, getting back to the actual toy reveals and news, they did also show off a Ned and Peter Parker two pack now these two figures are essentially you know them in their civilian clothes and whatnot well i guess peter in his civilian clothes and ned just being ned but uh yeah i guess they'd make some good background characters uh the face sculpt on tom holland is a little wonky and stuff ned is pretty spot on but uh the one for tom holland is a little wonky so anyways moving on to the second two pack that they did announce and they did announce a Noel and venom with wings two pack and uh the price for this one is about 70 plus dollars i don't remember exactly i think it was 75 or 85 i don't remember exactly but yeah the prices are really starting to skyrocket astronomically and so they also wanted to give you another two pack to go along with those astronomical prices and that being a brand new spider-man and spinneret two pack so this spider-man isn't like any other spider-man this isn't your mom's spider-man this isn't your dad's spider-man heck this isn't even your Spider-Man. This is the brand new pinless Spider-Man. Uh, so yeah, no more mismatched uh, colored pins on the inside and the outside. Now it's all seamless and pinless. So throw away all those old Spider-Man figures that you have because now you have your one right here. But you have to get it in that two-pack with Spinneret. So yeah. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Marvel's gonna marvel, right guys? So anyways, moving on, they did also announce a cartoon lizard figure. So he is the next one coming in, that retro carded wave. So look out for him. And last but not least, it was a very Spider-Man centric uh, live show, obviously, because they ended off with the amazing fantasy, I think they said 80th anniversary or 70th, I don't remember exactly what year anniversary, but it's the Spider-Man from the first appearance so you get him in his first appearance costume with the webbing and everything and looks cool i have to admit it looks pretty cool once again i personally am not a marvel legends collector so i will not be picking that up uh but yeah the prices on these guys have been pretty fucking crazy i have to admit i mean it's just amazing what these prices are getting to so that basically wrapped it up for the marvel legends uh you know reveals and stuff for that show but uh yeah as you can see a lot of spider-man stuff on the way and they did reiterate that they are currently working on bringing us the three spider-man from the movie as well so moving on to the last bit of news thank you so much to diamond select and their marketing manager zach oath for sending over all the information and images for these next 
uh, statues, toys, and reveals. So starting off with the Cobra Kai 3-inch PVC statues. Now it seems like these things may come in a set, although I'm not 100% sure. I didn't read too much uh, of the information on these guys. I probably should have, but uh, I didn't, so oops. Uh, but yeah, they're coming. And next up, they are going to be bringing us a Green Hornet Kato Deluxe figure. So that will definitely be a great figure. Super excited for that one. Next up, let's go ahead and talk about the latest Diamond Select Gallery statue, and that is Captain Carter from What If. So yes, this statue is based off Captain Carter from the What If series, and as you can see, she looks pretty badass. So next up, you do also have a Jubilee 1 7 scale bust, and to go along with that, they are also releasing a Professor X 1 7 scale mini bus and if you happen to miss out on the marvel select doctor strange and loki from the mcu you're in luck because diamond select has decided to re-release them and they are up for pre-order right now but that's not all the news guys we do have a few more things and the first one being a stormtrooper a new hope 3d and a half whatever that means scale bust i don't know what the 3d means uh but yeah it says 3d and a half scale bust so uh yeah looks pretty fucking cool but uh it's one of the pricier items i have to admit i think it's a gentle giant item so be aware of that but next up we do also have a brand new sabine wren one seven scale mini bus for the last thing that they did release it is a fennec shan one six scale bus from the book of boba so that wraps up this week's toy news guys so yeah thank you so much for joining me for another episode of coffee and toys uh like i said no coffee and toys live this coming week no coffee and toys podcast this coming week as i will be celebrating my 25th birthday on the beautiful island of maui uh so i will be relaxing and enjoying and i hope you guys have a great week in the meantime, like I said, I still have plenty of content already up for you guys, ready to go up, uh, you know, as the days go by. So don't worry. I still have stuff for you guys there. Stay tuned for this week's Coffee and Toys Live interview coming up right after this. Uh, and yeah, guys, once again, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for 800 plus subscribers. Uh, I really do appreciate it. You know, like I said, I'm turning 25 and at 25, I would have never thought in a million years that I'd be uh, talking about toys the way I do and doing stuff with toys the way I do talking to toy companies and a great toy photographers and doing toy photography myself you know um, I guess toy photography in a sense has always been a passion of mine you know growing up I was never able to draw I was always able to put my toys in some great looking action scenes and stuff and I kind of just translated that into this hobby and stuff and I always find myself really at peace, even as frustrating as it gets sometimes when you're trying to balance things, trying to get things just right. And right when you get it just right and you're pulling your hand away, you tap the other thing and it just completely turns everything to shit. But uh, it's just a great feeling and a relieving feeling, and a light feeling, a stress relieving feeling, I should say, when I'm playing with my toys. You know, I, I can admit it as a 25 year old, I can admit that I'm playing with my toys and uh, it makes me happy and I couldn't be happier because these are the things that I grew up with and uh, despite being 25, they still continue to teach me lessons and even create new friendships for myself. So I have a lot to thank to this stuff for what I am and what I have in my life. Uh, it's kind of weird to say I have that, but I'm talking about the franchises obviously, but obviously these are physical, tangible representations of those franchises that we grew up loving. And so yeah, 25 and still playing with toys who would have thought you know but here's the next 25 and hopefully i'm still playing with them when i'm 50 so why don't we go ahead and get into this week's unboxing and of course it is the mcfarland toys retro 66 penguin so yeah this basically like i said rounds out all the figures i need for my retro batman collection uh, but who knows what else he'll release. Maybe he'll release something cool and I'll end up picking that up as well But with that being said, why don't we go ahead and bust this bad boy open free him from his plastic prison ironically with a Batman themed knife, um, you know, he probably wouldn't be too happy about that, but He's almost free and the cool thing about this new wave is Todd actually decided to include some new uh, 
punching effects accessories. They're not the same as the ones we've gone before uh, because previously he was just repacking them all the same and whatnot. So uh, let me get this guy out of the packaging and everything and we'll be right back. All right, guys, so here we have the penguin all out of his packaging. And I have to admit, this is actually a pretty cool figure, you know. Uh, it is a really good representation and interpretation of the 66 penguin. So, yeah, super happy with this guy. And it's kind of weird he has a choking hand, though, uh, for it being, you know, the 66 penguin and not uh, the new one. You know, the new one's a little darker. Obviously, he doesn't strangle anybody in the Batman. But if that penguin or this penguin was going to strangle anybody, it'd probably be Danny DeVito's penguin that strangled him, right? But uh, anyways, guys, yeah, that is it for this portion of this week's Coffee and Toys Live. Once again, thank you, thank you so much for 800 subscribers, guys. It really means the world to me. Like I said, at 25, I would have never thought I'd be playing with toys, talking about talking about toys like this. And uh, it's because of you guys that makes it possible and brings so much joy and happiness to my aging life at this point. So thank you so much, guys. I hope you guys do have an amazing week. And I cannot wait to get back to doing Coffee and Toys Live for you guys the following week and the podcast as well. And hopefully I can find some great stuff while I'm on the island and have it here on the table in two weeks. So with that being said, guys, mahalo. Thank you so much. And let's go ahead and get into this week's Coffee and Toys. Guys, welcome back to the Cool Fears channel. I'm your host, Jesse the Bat Madrigal, aka the Buff Collector. And welcome to episode 13 of Coffee and Toys, where I will speak to a new guest every week about toys, toy photography, and so much more. This week, I'd like to welcome film reviewer Real Ship. Welcome to the show, Joe. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And uh, what's up to everybody in the chat, I see. And uh, yeah, happy to be here. Ready to, get, ready to talk some business. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. So first and foremost, man, how's your week been? Uh, so far, so good. So far, so good. Just uh, doing a lot. I've been working at my regular job, of course, and I've been putting out a lot of content, trying to uh, keep up with that. It's in the world of entertainment. There's just constantly stuff coming out so it's very difficult but uh i, I think i do a pretty good job of it so <laughs> no yeah definitely man definitely and uh how's the yeah. new kid right you just had a new kid right uh not yet not yet my oh, yet, my what yet. we're expecting though yes okay, yes yeah. due dates in july so yeah we're okay, we're just so coming up on it yeah yeah definitely and it's my first so i don't really know what to expect so <laughs> hey, so yeah i'm pretty excited me, I have a dog. That's you don't have any? Oh, okay. Like All right. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> yeah. No, I hear you. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Uh, just a new challenge, I guess. Uh, I'll figure it out, I'm sure. So. <laughs> no, yeah, man. I'm sure you'll, you'll probably have a bunch of fun, you know, especially showing them all the great movies that you enjoyed watching as you grew up and stuff. So I'm Yeah, sure you know what? That great, That's, you know, hobby and stuff to connect with them. Yeah, no doubt. That's kind of what I'm looking forward to most is just like, yeah, kind of passing on the things that I grew up with onto him. Like, you know what I mean? That's, that's really exciting to me. So, uh, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to that for sure. So. No, yeah, that would definitely be great, man. So, uh, yeah, man. So sounds like you're having a good week so far. Sounds like you've been busy putting out some great content and whatnot. So, uh, what exactly got you into wanting to review movies first and foremost? Uh, yeah, so uh, I'd say it was uh, around 2016, 2017. Uh, I just started to notice that I was getting kind of frustrated with entertainment. I love movies, like a lot, like unhealthy, un unhealthy, an un unhealthy amount. I, I, love, I love movies because it's like, I actually like they, they're a huge part of my upbringing. And a lot of them were a huge influence on me. So when I started to see like modern entertainment, I guess you could say kind of go in a direction I wasn't really into. Um, I went to YouTube because that's what you do. I mean, you look and see if like there's anyone else out there who kind of feels the same way you do, right? And it was very hard for me to find anyone who was really, um, I guess, looking at things in the way I was. So I, and, yeah, and I and I got like a lot of movie reviewers who were basically just saying the same things over and over again. It was very repetitive. It was almost like the entertainment itself. I was just like I was getting the same thing. And I was like, I love movies enough, you know, why don't I try my hand at this? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's pretty much how it started. It was just from me being frustrated and wanting to vent a little bit about the current state of movies. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, honestly, it started actually with five of us on my channel. Um, it wasn't just me. I had a group of friends with me as well. 
but now I'm the only one left. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, it was like, it took a long time for me to kind of get traction and find my voice. But once I did, um, I definitely see, see a difference now. I definitely see people showing up and, and I, it really, the best compliment I ever got doing movie reviews was just that I was the voice of their of their opinion. Like they, they were looking for someone to voice their frustrations because that's what I was looking for. And now I do get comments like that to say, thank you for saying what I've been thinking all this time. And that really drives me to keep doing it. So, so yeah, that's pretty much how it all started. <laughs> no, yeah, I totally get that, man. Because like with me coming from at least toy reviews and stuff, it's kind of similar to that where I kind of saw what people were doing and I was like you know what I can do that but I want to make sure I give like an honest review not that other people don't right but I'm like you know what if I'm going to put my money towards these figures and stuff I'm going to give my brutal honest review and I get comments like oh you're being too hard on figures and stuff and then I've also gotten comments like yeah. oh yeah you know that's exactly what I was thinking like you know what I mean same exact thing so yes I totally yes. understand Yes, and I and I I'll admit I have very strong opinions about things, and um, I, I fully admit that sometimes you know it, it could come off as me being uh, arrogant if in a way, but it's not really that. It's I always tell people, even when I'm being negative, it's coming from a place that really cares. Like I really care about movies. I really care about the movie making process. Like mm -hmm. nothing is more important to me really, other than my family and friends. You're like you know what I mean? It's like it's just a huge part of my life, and I just want to see it pointed in a in a more positive direction in a better direction and and so i always tell people like don't take it as like i'm just constantly being negative you know what i mean i i do try to and and it, it and when i do i'm positive about something it's you know it's good because i'm extra critical about stuff so you know what i'm saying oh, yeah. So, so yeah so i've always and i've pointed people in a direction of movies that like maybe you know they wouldn't have thought to watch and then they were like oh thank you for recommending that to me another good perk of what i do so so yeah, there's a lot to it for sure, but <clears throat> no, yeah, I think it comes, it has to come from a place to care if you're willing to sit down and actually critique something and not just tear yeah. it apart for no reason, but to actually look at it, analyze it and say, this is what's wrong with it. This is how it could be better. Right. And you know, this is how it used to be. And now they're doing this. Like that's not, you right. have to care. You know, that has to come from a place of caring for you to take the time yes. to do that. Yeah, no doubt. And to anyone who's ever um, been a content creator and did videos on YouTube, it's, it's, it's not an easy process. Like it's, it's, it takes up a lot of your day just making one video. And I wouldn't oh, yeah. be doing that if I didn't care. You know what I mean? Like if I didn't care, I would just rant for five minutes and just throw the video up. But no, I edit it. You know, I add clips. I do all kinds of crazy stuff to make it more, you know, more entertainment value. So like, yeah, a lot of people don't realize what goes into it. I think sometimes, but um, yeah, it's just, to me, it's just a lot of fun. Like, and no matter what I'm doing, whether the video is negative or positive, I have a ton of fun doing it. It just it allows me to be creative with my opinions, if that makes sense. <laughs> like, no, yeah, totally. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I can totally understand how people definitely don't understand, you know, what goes into making those videos. You know, I can spend easily a whole day on one video, and yes. you know, like you said, I can just throw up a brand and it can be real quick and stuff. But for me to have to take mm -hmm. the time to edit, do all this stuff, you know. It, it takes a lot of time. Yeah. Even myself, yeah. when I first started, I didn't realize how much time it was until I was deep into it. And I was like, well, I'm a little too deep to stop now. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, cause I started off being very uh, laid back with it, I guess you could say. Like when it was five of us, it's, it's kind of hard to be organized. And it was more of a podcast format. And we kind of just sat at a round table and just talked. And it, 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 it was never really what I wanted it to be. Like in my heart of hearts, I knew what I wanted to do, but it was just getting everyone else on the same page to do it. But mm. once they started dropping off one by one, then I was eventually just able to do what I wanted. I was able to, you know, live my vision out. And I think it's worked out because like I've grown exponentially since that time. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. so yeah, it's just been, it's been a wild ride and I'm just, I don't know. I'm looking forward to it. keep going. Cause like, I, my goal is to be like one of the top movie reviewers on YouTube someday. And I, I definitely think I can accomplish that. So, so we'll see how it goes. <laughs> well, you already did step one just by, you know, thinking of that goal and speaking it, you know, that's step one yep. is just having it and speaking it into existence and then putting in the work, which you obviously are since you've grown, 
you know, like you said, exponentially. And yeah, we have a question real quick. Yeah. Go figure. Go wants to know: Is that a wallpaper behind you, or are those all real VHS? I know the answer. No, these but... are. Yes, yes, these are <laughs> um, these are real VHS. The, actually, one of the things that um, I was doing for a while was making VHS videos. That was kind of um, where I, I. I guess that was like two years ago. I started doing them, where I started collecting them again, because I just love VHS. I think they're just aesthetically pleasing more so than like Blu-rays or DVDs or anything like that. <laughs> um, I, and they just take me back. Like that's what I grew up on was watching VHS. Oh, yeah. So. So yeah, I started going to thrift stores and flea markets and yeah, this is a collection right here behind me. I have many more. This is just what's in the frame. But um yeah, my goal is to actually build one of those like VHS stores like you see on Instagram all the time. Like I would love yeah. to do that in my basement at some point. So but yeah, these are all real. Yep. The whole collection here. I could kind of pan around so you get a better feel of it. Oh, there's a little bit Jack more. hanging out with you right there. Yeah, the jackhead, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> People are probably wondering about that too. <laughs> That's just another wrinkle in my channel, basically. Uh, basically, it, I don't even know how it started. Um, someone gave me that head, and then <laughs> turned out it ended up on my channel, and I started giving him a voice and everything. It was just it turned into a thing somehow. That's just how it goes sometimes. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely, man. So I see you have uh, the Shining and the and uh, Scream up there. Are those two of your favorite horror movies? No doubt, no doubt. The Shining is one of my favorite movies. Period. Um, but, uh, as far as horror movie goes, those three right there, Scream, Halloween, and The Shining are probably my top three, I would say, horror movies for sure. Uh, the, at least the ones I watch the most, no doubt, no doubt. Yeah. Um, The Shining is just an incredible movie to me. Like every time I watch it, I get something new out of it. It's, 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 it's amazing the way that they put that movie together. Like to this day, I still see new theories about that movie that I'd never heard before. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> It's it's one of those things, if you go down a rabbit hole on YouTube, there are a ton of Shining videos, just theories from different people, different ways of looking at it, you know, uh, behind the scenes stuff about how he created it and everything. It was just, it's one of those movies, too, that I didn't grow up on. I, I watched it later in life, and um, it just connected with me immediately. As soon as I saw it, I was in. Like, that's it. So, <laughs> so yeah, The Shining is great. That's definitely one of my favorites, for sure. <clears throat> yeah, you would hope for you know everything that the director put him through to film that movie. You would hope it was a great movie, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, Kubrick did some very unethical things in that movie for sure, by today's standards, bit, for sure, by bit. then standards, really. So yeah, it was. Yeah, it's he. He was a little rough on his actors, but um, yeah, he definitely made a masterpiece out of it. So yeah, <clears throat> oh, definitely. Uh, have you seen the new screen movie? I have, I have seen the new screen movie. Um, that and that, that brings me to <laughs> that brings me to the one of the things that I was uh, highly critical of, actually. Um, and it's it's because I'm such a big Scream fan, and I've loved all the other movies, even the third one, which is you know, arguably the worst one in, in most people's eyes. But um, but they all had a certain yeah. charm to them, and I felt like the newest one was missing that charm a little bit. Um, Mostly because of Wes Craven's, I guess, absence. I think that's what I chalk it up to most. It just didn't have his flair to it. Um, and he was involved in all of them except that one. Like, you know what I mean? So it was like, yeah. I definitely felt his presence not in the movie. And I felt like it was a bit underwhelming as far as, like, what we come to know from Scream. Because Scream's all about the twist ending, right? Um, mm -hmm. And I was just highly underwhelmed by the ending of this Scream. Like, it just, on every level, it just kind of failed for me. Um yeah, I, I, it, it, I wasn't a big fan of it, obviously, so, yeah. Really? Okay. <laughs> yeah. See, and I have yeah. the complete opposite feeling on that one. Like, honestly, for, but okay. it's, I feel like for what it was, like, you know, a reboot slash sequel, it did right. a good job. Because when you look at a lot of these reboot slash sequels, they fall hard on their ass. Or at least this one, they I didn't cringe the whole time. I actually found right. myself, I at least enjoyed the whole movie and found myself entertained at least i'm not saying it was the greatest okay. scream or it was the best story or, or you know what i mean but i did enjoy the yeah. kills for what it was and for that one major kill that was in there i don't want to spoil anything if anybody hasn't seen it that one did surprise yeah. me and shock me and i was like you know what i have to give him respect for at least pulling that off and yeah i was like okay you know what i mean but it was it was, it was definitely a ballsy move yes 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 for enjoyable. sure I, yeah, I mean, initially when watching it, I wasn't um, against it as much as I am now. I think the, sometimes the more I, I sit with a movie and the more I think about it, 
like sometimes things start to pop up that I realized like I, I dislike more than I thought I did. Mm-hmm. That always happens with me. Like I'll I'll give a movie sometimes a somewhat decent review, and then I'll after thinking about it for a while, I'll I'll, I'll say, man, I should have been a little bit more critical of it, or vice versa. Maybe I'll be too critical of something, and then I'll be like, well, I, I I could have been a little nicer about that one. But that's part of the job, really. I mean, your your opinions on movies change over time. Like that's kind of the whole thing with them. So, um, so yeah, like I didn't dislike it as much as I thought I did the first time. But then, like the more I thought about it, it just kind of fell out of favor with me. I don't know. I, I'm going to watch it again, and maybe I'll have a different perspective this time. We'll see how it goes. But because I don't want to hate it, I love Scream. So it's like you know what I mean. So. No, yeah, exactly. That's why, like for me, at least it was an enjoyable and entertainable or entertaining movement. Right movie and stuff and like i said i wasn't just cringing at every line everything that was happening i was able to sit there and actually enjoy it you know what i mean it wasn't like wow they said that wow they did that like it was just like okay it was an entertaining movie for what was it an hour and a half two hours or whatever it was i wasn't like damn that's two hours of my life i'll never get back that was just like okay two hours well spent wasn't something that i'm gonna go boast about it's not something i'm gonna be like it's my number one (laughs) screen movie or stuff but uh you know, like I said, yeah. it wasn't a waste of my time, at least, like a lot of movies nowadays are. Yeah, it's it, – unfortunately, and I know this is one of the topics you want hey, to Rocco cover. But it's, oh, what's up, Rocco? <laughs> I know he's on vacation right now, so thanks for popping in even on your vacation. Appreciate that. But, um, yeah, so I, it, that's one of the things that I think it, – it's just that when, when Hollywood goes to the well one too many times, it – it's starting to rub me the wrong way because it's like, yes, you could keep making screen movies. Yes, you could keep making Halloween movies. You could keep making superhero movies. But I'm in a place right now where I'm just like looking for something original. Like that's that's just where my mind's at right now. You know what I mean? And it's like, yeah, yes, I could I could watch sequels all day long and, I, and they'll be fine. But like I forget them the next day. It's not like it sticks with me. Like I want a new experience that sticks with me and it, and it makes me, because that's how I decide whether I like a movie or not. Does Do I keep thinking about it after I watched it? You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. or does it leave as soon as I leave the theater? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's yeah. like, that's, that's really how I judge it. And the, the movies that stick with me are few and far between these days. <laughs> it's like, it, I do, there are some, there are some, but it's, it's not for the most part, they're forgettable. And I think that's the problem. There's just a lack of creativity, a lack of originality. And I think that's my biggest problem right now with it. It's just that, yeah, it's just, it doesn't appeal to me. Like I come from the eighties and nineties where almost every movie was like an original idea. Like, you know what I mean? Like you had your Ghostbusters, you had your, you know, your Beverly Hills cops, these random movies that turned into like franchises. You know what I mean? We don't get that Mm -hmm. anymore. I don't even remember the last movie, original movie, that turned into a franchise. The only one I can think of is The Matrix in 1999. Oh, what about John Wick? Oh, there is John Wick. Yeah, that's true. Okay, I wasn't thinking about it. That's one. That's one, yes. (laughs) But I can't think of another one. Like, it's like, everything is a sequel to something that came out in the 80s or 90s. Like, you know what I mean? So it's like, Mm -hmm. that's where my problem comes in, I think, with with modern movies. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> I definitely agree with that. You know, Hollywood cannot come up with anything original and creative right. because I feel like they need to have some kind of tie nostalgia wise to a franchise one to put it yeah. out and they know they can't be too risky on anything original nowadays. So they just want to tie no, it no. into what they know is safe and what people were willing to put money yes. into. Yep. And it, and I, I've done research on this because, like, obviously I make a lot of videos about it. So, And um, there's insider people who have talked about this, like, why we don't get original movies anymore. And for the most part, it comes down to two very huge things. It's it's box office and it's – or, excuse me, it's, it's, it's – box, yeah, it's box office and it's physical media. Um, in the past, when you would make an original movie, even if it didn't – perform well in the theater you could make up for it with physical media sales and a lot of Mm -hmm. movies would get legs because of physical media well physical media is dying out like nobody really gets it anymore so those movies that would normally get recognized on physical media aren't going to get recognized anymore only the big Mm -hmm. movies do in the theaters and the other problem is that only people people only support those big movies when they're in the theater like so they're only going to see superhero movies so then production companies only think that's what that's all people want to see. Like, yeah. so that's how 
it's a combination of those two things why we don't get original movies as much anymore. So, yeah. It's it's unfortunate, but I mean, that's why I have my channel. I, I, my whole goal is to kind of just make people think about this a little bit differently and maybe get people to start buying physical media again. Because they make it, it's just it doesn't sell like it used to. Like You know what I mean? And Because it, it helps. It really helps. Like, if you like a movie, I highly recommend that you buy physical media for a couple of reasons. One, it sends a message to the studio. And two, you know it's not ever going to be edited. <laughs> like, you'll have yeah. it. It's, it's, you know what I mean? Because they're in the habit of editing old movies now. That's a thing now, too. So it's like, no, yeah. yeah, so... So there's definitely yeah layers to it for sure, but um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much my thoughts on that. Yeah, so. No, yeah, but also like Bob's toys and comics says, you know, it's been a while since we've actually seen a good comedy, and I think that has to do with yeah, comedy is so so touchy nowadays. It's so walking on glass and eggshells. You know, you can't make certain jokes. You can't do this. You can't do that. You have yeah. to say it a safe way. And I feel like comedy can't be safe. That's the whole reason it's funny. Yes. Like, yeah, it's... You know what I mean? Rest- yes, you can't have restrictions with comedy. Comedy needs to be open for the comedic person to talk about whatever they want to talk about. The The biggest thing with comedy and why comedy connected with people, you know, in the past was that it was like, it's funny because it's true type situations. Like, you know what I mean? Like, they would take real life situations and, you know, sometimes ugly situations and make you laugh about it. Like, Mm -hmm. but you can't do that anymore. It's like, if you do that, then someone's going to get offended and you might lose your career over it. Like, it's like, and that's no way to, to live really. That's no way to, you're, you're stifling their creativity. And that's a real problem for me. And that's another reason that I don't like this whole like kind of PC culture. It's like, it really gets in the way of creativity. It, it limits people and what they're capable of doing in movies and stand up, whatever the case may be in television. So yeah, that's definitely a real problem for sure. Yeah. <clears throat> oh yeah, definitely. So hopefully, I mean, hopefully things change. I mean, I think we're seeing the repercussions of everything recently, especially with what happened at the Oscars. Like people are seeing like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. come on, it's a, it's a joke. And so I think people are going to hopefully change their views on it and, Hopefully things will change yeah. slowly. Uh, you know, I think, you know, movie companies are starting to see that they want to start making money and not losing money. Because the last few movies that have made money have been what? Spider-Man and Batman. Right. Like the last <laughs> That's the problem. Yes. What, what were the other ones that were big besides those? None, right? I mean, no, it's all... opening. Yeah. For a horror, like a horror movie is, is, is considered a success much easier because they don't, they don't cost anything to make. So it's like, exactly. yeah, so you can you can do a decent amount with a horror movie and it's considered a success. Whereas with a superhero movie like they they all make big bucks. And yes, I think Spider-Man was the number one movie last year. And I think so far this year it's it's Batman, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and yeah, like and that's part of the problem. It's just like if you only go out there and, and watch superhero movies, then that's all we're going to get like. In, in Hollywood's mind, superheroes are the easiest thing for them to make right now because they know people are going to show up no matter what, whether it's good or bad. Like, you know what I mean? People just yeah. show up just based on the fact that it says Marvel or DC over top of it. Like, that's it. Like, and that's a problem because, again, you have filmmakers who are out there really trying to bring original ideas back, but they can't, they can't even get into theaters because these superhero movies like dominate the th- like they take up so many screens that smaller movies can't even get into the theaters like you know what i mean and that's kind of what martin scorsese was talking about and why he got all the flack that he got but he was right like it's like it's harder for for smaller movies to get in the theater because of these movies you know what i mean so it's like it's just yeah it's it's not good for anyone really it's not good for variety like that's and that's more really what we need in entertainment is variety and you can't just have one genre dominating constantly so yeah but it is what it is yeah no yeah definitely do you think that we're starting to get like you know superhero movie fatigue especially like marvel fatigue considering how many movies we get in tv shows i mean i know i am (laughs) but uh yeah i i kind of see the tides changing a little bit just in general um i think at some point like everything like goes in waves like you know what i mean like 
You know, there was a time when Westerns were popular in Hollywood. There was a time when, you know, action movies were the mm-hmm. big thing in Hollywood. And, you know, superhero movies are having their time now. And I really do hope that, like, it, it kind of scales back a little bit because I prefer the superhero movies that, you know, the original ones when they weren't out all the time, like your Batman 89s or your even the original Spider-Man, the Sam Raimi Spider-Man, like mm-hmm. back when the movies were an event, they felt special. You know what I mean? Like now they don't feel special anymore because they come out every two months. Like, so it's mm-hmm. like, it's hard for me to get excited about them because it's like, oh, here comes another one. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, and I love superheroes. Like I grew up on them. But I'm just, like, so burnt out on them that I can't even get excited about them. Like, and that sucks. Like, I don't want to feel that way, but that's – it's just it, how it, it, it's how it goes. Like, you know, I get bored with stuff, especially when it's <laughs> constantly being forced down my throat. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. But it is what it is. Like, I, I, yeah, I assume that at some point it'll fall off and then we'll get obsessed with something else. But I don't know when that's going to happen. It doesn't seem like it's – slowing down a lot maybe a little bit but it's still you know spider-man made huge numbers so oh yeah 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 so i don't know we'll see what happens <clears throat> oh yeah definitely but i think uh you know i think marvel kind of like messed up a bit by kind of continuing on so quickly after endgame like i feel like there was yeah. such a build-up and everything that that should have like been it for a while kind of like you said yes. make it an event you know like that was the big event and then the next one to come mm-hmm. back would have been a bigger event because it's like okay we've taken some time off and now here right. we are again yeah it's i you know i'm i'm a little bit rough on marvel sometimes because they are they're kind of the reason why this is happening um it's not necessarily their fault they just did what they did and people liked it and then but people got obsessed with the idea of doing everything the way they do and that's kind of where why we are the way we are but and I've been hard on them, but I will say this. They, they at least had a plan. Um, they built to it over what, it, what was it, a 10, 12-year period, whatever it was. And, you know, and they executed their plan. I, I got to give them credit for that. And people loved it for the most part. But, yeah, I agree. Endgame should have been, like, almost a, not, not, not done forever, but maybe take a break after that and then see where you're at and do a reboot if you have to or whatever down the line. But, yeah, to continue right after that – it, it kind of just cheapened the finale. You know what I'm saying? Like that was, you know, a big moment for comic book movies. You know, you had two of your biggest heroes and in, in, in Iron Man and Captain America kind of having their swan song. You know what I mean? They should have let it, you know, play out a little bit more and then seen where they stood after, you know, two or three years or something like that. But no, they went right back into it. So it was like, yeah, again, it's, it, it's impossible to get invested in it for, from my perspective because of that. Like, yeah so no yeah definitely but i think the other thing that had to do with it was also what you said you know the cap and iron man they had their swan song you know like the main heroes that people grew up with that have been around you know 40 50 60 80 almost 100 years they're finally done with their storylines and it's cool that they're trying to introduce new characters that you know to bring in and everything but I feel like they want us to love those new characters just as much as we love the characters that we grew up knowing all throughout this time. And it's like, I yeah. don't feel the same way about these new characters as I do about no. you know these ones that I grew up with. No matter how right. cool you make them look, how much money you put into these movies, how much writing you do, it's just these aren't the characters I grew up with. And just because you right. label them superheroes and under the Marvel banner, I'm not going right. to automatically love them. Exactly, exactly. And and I'm, I'm a firm believer that not every comic book character needs a movie. Like, it's like, it, not all of them are worthy of a movie. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, that's not to say they can't be side characters or cameos or whatever. But like, do I think that I don't even really think that like a character like Ant-Man needs a movie. Like To me, he could have just shown up in a in a in, a, in an Avengers movie, and we would have never thought the difference. You know what I mean? We would have never noticed the difference. Like, like there's mm-hmm. just certain there's certain heroes, yes, that deserve the movie. You know, Batman, Superman, Iron Man, Captain America, Spider Man. You know, your household names. Mm-hmm. But to 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 think that every single comic book that was ever made is going to have the same impact that say Guardians of the Galaxy did is just kind of naive. Like Guardians of the Galaxy was like a once in a lifetime thing. It was kind of obscure, and then they turned it into a phenomenon. But now they think they could do that with everything, and it just it doesn't really work that way. Like you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And that's kind of the problem. So, I don't know. Yeah, 
I just, I, I would really love for them all to take a break and just like let it breathe for a minute. Like, you know what I mean? But it is what it is. Yeah. Well, I mean, do you think Warner Brothers and the DCU is going to take a break now? Because uh, they're kind of, <laughs> they're kind of stewing in some hot stuff right now between Aquaman 2, the Flash movie, the DCU in general. They, yeah. You know, I mean, they're not doing so well in these last few weeks. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm a DC guy. I, I fully oh, admit so that. I mean, you can, yeah. you can see it all right here. Right. Yeah. And, um, you know, I would love for them to have gotten their stuff together sooner, um, but they didn't. And now we're in a position, yeah, where, like, you have all these outside things happening, like, you know, the Ezra Miller stuff. And, the, and it, you know what I mean? It's, it, it seems like there's even more uncertainty with DC than there ever was before. And now they have new owners, too. So it's like, what do they want to do? So it's like, at this point, again, it would be a great time for them to just kind of take a step back, uh, let these properties just kind of be idle for a minute, figure out what you want to do, come together, come up with a plan. Like, personally, if it was me, and this is what just what I would do, I would take the Joker approach with most things. And I don't mean make it like a serious dark movie, but just in a sense to like, I prefer one-offs more than I do shared universes. Like mm -hmm. I prefer just a good self-contained story and then you move on to something else. Like I would prefer that over a shared universe any day of the week. That's just my personal opinion. Um, and I, I think that's the way that DC should have went to kind of differentiate themselves from Marvel, like go that route and do more, you know, um, emotional stories like Joker, you know what I mean? They kind of did that with the Batman sort of kind of, which is why I'm a little bit more forgiving of that movie. Cause at least it was, it was different than all the other. Movies. Like it felt different to me. So um, that's really what I'm looking for is just, yeah, give me some variety. Like, you know what I mean? Don't make everything look the same, sound the same. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just, no, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't know if we'll ever get there, but it, this would be a great time for DC to just kind of take a break and just reassess things. And then, you know, just, 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 I don't know, just come up with a plan. Like they never really had a plan. I mean, Zack Snyder kind of had a plan when he was in, but not really. And since he left, not really, but kind of. And then, but since he's gone, it's like, yeah, it's like, there is no stability whatsoever. At least there was some form of stability with him. Now it's like they haven't had any, they haven't even talked about a Superman movie. And like, what's the last one that came out? 2011. Like, how do you not make a Superman movie in, you know, over 10 years? Like, you know what I mean? Like, like that's ridiculous to me. Like he, he's your number one asset outside of Batman. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, it just, it's wild to me. And to me, they had the perfect Superman in house with Henry Cavill. I think he, he fits the part perfectly. Just make a movie. Like he's waiting for you. He wants to do it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. We'll see if it goes, but it, it doesn't look good. Let me put it that way. <laughs> well, like you said, you know, at least they have new owners and stuff, and they didn't pay $43 yeah. billion dollars to lose more money. You know what I mean? So they're in to make money at this <laughs> yeah. point. And so I have heard that they're starting to look for a Kevin Feige type figure for their DC universe yeah. to, you know, kind of map everything out. Not a director, because they're like, you know, everybody's throwing in directors' names and all this stuff, and they're saying, no, we don't want a director. We want a producer you know, to overlook right. all this stuff, not to direct it and stuff, you know. And so hopefully with that, and I hear that they're also going to be doing, uh, you know, one-offs and stuff, kind of like Joker and the Batman and stuff to help differentiate themselves from Marvel. So they'll have both going on and whatnot. But, uh, you yes. know, and also they do want to use Superman. You know, they Discovery's head CEO has come out and said, you know, this is a character that's been sitting idle for so long for no apparent reason. And, you know, we want to use yep. him. And so I fully believe we'll get a new superman movie very soon because yeah like i said they didn't pay 43 billion dollars just to sit on you know lucrative properties or to right movies yeah. that aren't going to make a money right 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 and everything we heard prior to like the merger or whatever like them talking about making you know batgirl and supergirl and uh, which is fine but like let's be honest i'm sorry but those characters aren't really going to carry your franchise in my opinion like your your bread and butter is Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman. Like, let's establish them, and then we can talk about side characters and like these secondary characters later. But like, to think you're going to build around Batgirl and Supergirl, I just don't see that like working. So I'm glad I'm kind of glad they have new ownership because maybe they're going to come in and 
you know, reassess the plan. <laughs> so no, we'll yeah, see. You know, no, yeah, definitely. You know, it's like they didn't even decide to bring in these <laughs> characters alongside a lot of these other characters to, you know, help build them up and then get rid of the main ones. They're just like, okay, the main ones are out. Here are the new ones. Right. Yes. Yeah. There was, there was no time in between to really, you know, absorb what was going on. And that's, and again, that's the problem. It's just like you move from one thing to the other and it's like, I don't even have enough time to figure out how I feel about this movie before another movie's coming out or another TV show, or it's just, it's too much. Like we have a overload of content just in general right now. It's like, it's like these with streaming services and everything, they just green light everything. It's like, no matter what it is, like we just need something to put on our, our, on our streaming service to justify our price points. Like that's, that's the model yeah. now. Right. And it's like half the things I watch on streaming services are completely forgettable. Like it's like, I, I'd say of everything I've ever watched on Netflix, maybe four shows I've actually thought were worthy of my time. Let, let's put it that way. Like, you know what I mean? And it's like, that's, and that's kind of where we're at too with streaming service. That that's a little bit of a problem too, because it's just like, it's 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 quantity over quality. Like I think is is what's happening with streaming services, and yeah. you know, just another way of watering down entertainment. That's what it feels like. So, uh, yeah, like you said, they just need something to say. You know, coming out this Friday on Netflix. You know, every week. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And it's you know I can't remember the last time I watched a Netflix original movie that I actually thought was good. Like. Half the time I watch them and I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, I move on. Like it's like nothing life changing ever comes out of Netflix. Outside of like I said, four, maybe five shows that I've watched on there that actually have stuck with me after the fact. But it's just like, yeah. I, I don't know. It's we're just in a different time now, I think. I just come from a different time, I guess, when when the originality and creativity was just more important, I guess. And and I'm just not I was, maybe I was born in the right time, but simultaneously born in the wrong time. I don't know. But, um, <laughs> yo, no, what's up, actually? Agree with that. No, I could definitely <clears throat> agree with that, man, because, you know, I feel the same way about movies. You know, I, we were born in either, either in the right time or the wrong time because, yeah. you know, it, at, growing up with, with what to us and stuff, CGI was utilized, was barely starting out and everything, you know, when we were coming up and everything. You know, CGI was such a new frontier. So it was yeah. rarely used. It was just used to enhance movies, and they were still using a lot of practical effects. I think that's one of the reasons yeah. why, you know, everything's greenlit so quickly and easily nowadays because they they can just greenlight it and stick everybody in front of a blue screen nowadays and film a whole fucking series and be yeah. good. You yep. know what I mean? We're yep. back in the day, you had to build a whole physical set, and then, you know, maybe you threw a little bit of money in to enhance it with CGI, but really not really, especially right. in sitcoms and stuff. But nowadays... It seems like even sitcoms are built and filmed on, you know, just CGI. Yes. It, everything is green screen now. Like Spider-Man No Way Home. I know everybody, you know, loves it, but it's it's 100% green screen almost. You know what I mean? It's like not even the suits were, were, were practical. It was like they just took the actor's head and put them on like a CGI suit. Like it's just, it, to me, the epitome of lazy. I, I know CGI takes work too. I'm not saying that the people who do that are lazy. But it's lazy from a from a studio perspective to just think you can like do everything with a CGI. Because I always go back to Jurassic Park, which to me is the perfect blend of CGI and practical effects. Like you use yeah. CGI where necessary, you use practical effects where necessary, and that CGI looks better still than some CGI we get now. So it's like oh, yeah. it's about the quality of the CGI too. Like you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I'm a big practical effects guy. Like even bad practical effects are good to me. Cause it's like, exactly. even if it's bad, it adds charm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, like the original, I always go back to the original Godzilla movie from 1954 or whatever. <laughs> and with the suit, with the suit, you know what I mean? Like yeah. to me, that's still more visually interesting than King Kong versus Godzilla from last year. Like it's just because of, it's just, it, it because I know what went into to creating that, like to, to create mm -hmm. that suit, to have someone in it, to, 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 come up with the movements of Godzilla, the person inside the suit. It's just like to build miniatures. You know what I mean? Like all of that stuff just made the movie much more appealing to me. And it's much more charming. And like, I watched the new King Kong versus Godzilla movie. And I, again, I forgot about it a half hour after I was done with it. I was like, okay. Like it's just, yeah. Practical effects need to make a comeback. Like <laughs> I, I just, I want to see 
people utilize that a little bit more if possible. I think that would help too. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> no, definitely, man. I, and that's one of the reasons why I absolutely love the new Batman movie besides, you know, them, yeah. you know, taking so many risks and it being such a different story and take on Batman. The fact that they yeah. used physical sets, like you can yes. literally, I don't care what anybody says, how good CGI is gone. You can tell when there's physical props and sets and everything versus CGI. There's a certain yeah. depth to things, shadows, lighting. As good as we've gone, as good as computers can get it, there's nothing that beats practical, real, physical objects in the room with the actors and stuff like that. Yeah. And that's what I loved about the Batman. Obviously, there is CGI used in it before, yeah. but to enhance it, to make it better when needed and stuff. Right. But like... I don't know if you know, but when they did the car chase, they actually jumped the Batmobile through like a big thing yep. of fire and stuff. It's like nobody does that nowadays. Not even the Fast and Furious movies do that. It's all CGI. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> it's it's funny, but like yes, you, you're 100 percent right. And actually, I just saw a movie uh, two weeks ago. It was a Michael Bay movie, actually. And you know, Michael Bay has his reputation, and he deserves it. But I appreciated Michael Bay more this time around because he actually did practical stunts like i was like at the very least it's real cars smashing into real cars stunt men doing it like using drone footage to actually like get in the thick of it like he did so many things in this in this movie it's called ambulance um it's fairly oh, new okay. but he did so many things in this movie that were like old school mentality hollywood and it was like it's amazing to me that I have to rely on Michael Bay to get that, but it's like that's that's where we are right now. Like you know what I mean? Like it's just like the guy who made Transformers is like taking Hollywood back to basics. It's crazy to think about, but it's like it, it totally works for me. And yes, Batman was another good example. Like actually having the Batmobile driving around in the streets and doing jumps and <clears throat> all of that just helps me connect with the movie more. Like every time. Like Exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. And if you really think about it, you know, if you look back at Michael Bay when he did Transformers and stuff, he utilized a lot of, you know, CGI mixed with practical effects. You know, obviously when the cars yeah. were cars and stuff, he had them physically <laughs> there as cars. It wasn't all CGI. You can tell those explosions right. were physical, actual explosions the actors were actually running away from. It wasn't like, yep. okay, just run towards the camera and we'll add it all in post. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's just, I, yeah, I don't know. Like, like the whole... um and I hate to keep picking on No Way Home, but it's the one that keeps <laughs> popping in my head. But like, there's a whole like bridge sequence in No Way Home where they, where him and Doc it's Ock fight on a bridge. CGI. Yeah, that bridge really exists, like really exists, but they still recreated it in CGI. Like, why not just go to the real bridge and do as much as you can, and then do a couple things with the with the CGI? I get it, but like, why why not go to the real bridge? I don't understand. Why you wouldn't just do that? Other than it's just easier to do it on a sound stage, like you know what I mean. Like, but sometimes easier isn't always better. <laughs> you know what I mean. So, oh, it's yeah, just exactly. it's wild. Yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. <clears throat> That's why you have to appreciate movies like you know Mission Impossible Three and True Lies that actually go to like those physical places, like on the bridge in Florida, and film right. and do all that stuff. It's like you have to appreciate that because nowadays they just don't do that. They don't. They don't. They won't even go and film outside anymore. Like you can totally no. tell it's not natural light. They're walking outside. Yeah. They're in a field, but it's not natural light. <laughs> yeah, it's it, yeah. And Mission Impossible. That's another good example of like, yeah, a movie that actually utilizes real stunts. I mean, Tom Cruise is actually hanging on the side of a plane. Like that's legit to me. That makes me respect the movie a lot more. Just the oh, fact yeah. that he was willing to do that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's, that's he does a bunch of stunts at what almost sixty years old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah he does and I, I i'm a fan i'm not ashamed to say i love tom cruise I, i'm a fan same, of like, same. the you dude's a real that. movie star to me yeah yeah you yeah to respect that you know like even in the new top gun like he's flying a real ass jet like he's like yeah yep. we couldn't imitate those g-forces so we all learned to fly jets yeah yeah like any any role that he goes into he he, he takes it seriously he commits to it yeah he like he, he learned how to bartend when he did a uh, cocktail. Like, you know what I mean? Like just the smallest from the smallest thing like that to learning to fly in a jet. It doesn't matter. Like he wants to take the role seriously. And I, I can appreciate that. Like I can appreciate like that anymore. No, there aren't like, it's like, it, it just take the easy way out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a method yeah. actor. I'm going to send rats to my co-stars. That makes me a method actor, but it's like, right. 
the, yeah, there's a difference between taking it seriously and being obnoxious. Like that's being obnoxious, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, yeah. It's so crazy. I mean, it is what it is at this point. I mean I mean, hopefully at some point movies change, you know, for the better and whatnot. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. It's for my sake, you know, it's I don't wanna rant about things every day. I wanna be happy about <laughs> the entertainment, you know what I mean? <laughs> like No, yeah, like, it's yeah. the thing people don't get. It's like we don't wanna be sour about these franchises that we love. It's just right. give us stuff that we don't connect with from our childhood that you're trying to mask as our childhood. It's just yeah. it's not gonna work out, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. It's we have a very strong connection to it for a reason. If you try to alter it and you turn it into something that it's not, we're going to notice. Like, you know what I mean? It's like we grew up on these things. I watched, you know, Star Wars, the first three Star Wars movies a billion times. So if you try to come in and do something different with it that doesn't fit with what I already know about it, I'm going to notice. Like, you know what I mean? It's like it's just oh, yeah. it's a natural reaction. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <clears throat> no, and, that, and the thing is, is, like, it doesn't even just – go into the movies like i don't know if you do comics at all but i was doing comics for a bit and they tried to introduce batman someone into batman's history like he was his buddy in the past and stuff like that it's like how many years have we known batman if he's never come across this guy and now you're trying to introduce it literally made me stop collecting comics because i was like you know what i can't even deal with this shit you're trying to you're trying to shoehorn something that just isn't going to work like if you want to introduce a new character introduce him as a new character don't be like Oh, he's been part of Batman's past. You just haven't heard him for right. the past 80, 90 years of Batman's history. It's like, I'm right. Good. Yeah. That, that's the type of stuff that Fast and the Furious movies do. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's, that's where those movies are at. So you shouldn't have, you know, things that we love, like, you know, comic, Batman comics doing the same thing. Like, it's like, yeah, there's a certain level of continuity and a certain level of lore that you have to abide by if you're going to come in and play in this sandbox. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, mm. I don't have a problem with a new interpretation, but you have to respect what came before. You have to understand what came before in order to make a good, you know, next chapter, like, basically, so. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, they try to basically mask what they give us as what we used to love. Like, here's a spoonful of sugar, right. but really, in reality, it's salt. Right. It's completely yeah. different. You know, it's like two different exactly. things. Exactly, yeah. Right. It's like yes. just because you you put this label on it doesn't mean I'm gonna like it just because it has the label on it. It has to actually be a physically good movie. It has to tell me a good story. I have to be entertained. Yeah. Just because you know that's why I think I enjoyed the last Batman movie so much because that was the most enjoyable Batman movie that I have seen since The Dark Knight Rises. You know what I mean? That, right. And that's considered one of the you know the it's not the best out of the three. Obviously, The Dark Knight is. But when you right. look at the more recent Batman fil- films, that was literally the last one that I can say I sat down and enjoyed in the theater. When I went and saw yeah. Batman v Superman, that was literally a 14-year letdown for me. I was a kid. <laughs> you know what I mean? When I saw the cartoon, yeah. and finally, 14 years later, they're like, oh, we're going to bring it to live action, and we're blah, blah, blah. You know, it's going to be a big right, yeah, event. Yeah. It's like, and it turned out to be four minutes of BVS, and then the rest of it being Dawn of Justice versus Doomsday. It's like... What the right. fuck? <laughs> I, I, I left that movie so disappointed. I was trying to convince yeah. myself it was a good movie because I didn't want to be disappointed. I was like, it was a good movie. It was a good movie. And I was like, in the back of my mind, I was like, it wasn't a good movie. It just wasn't. Right. Yeah. I think uh, that's probably one of the more polarizing movies to come out in the past, whatever, 10, 15 years. Um, I'm a little bit more forgiving of it than some people are. Uh, I actually enjoy it for the most part. I, I'll be honest with you. Um, yeah, it's, and I realize it's not a perfect movie. It's not flawless by any means. Um, but for the most part, I find enjoyment in it just because I, I kind of understand a little bit what he was trying to do with it. It, maybe the execution wasn't all the way there. Um, but as far as like his respect for this, I do feel like he still has respect for the source material. I, I feel like he mm-hmm. at least tried to give comic fans something that connected it with the comics again he could have done some things better but um overall like i'm not against that movie just because and especially the ultimate cut like i don't know if you've seen the ultimate cut the the one where all the stuff's not cut out of it i think that makes it a much better movie also but um but yeah like i don't know like the first time i watched it i wasn't quite sure how i felt about it 
but the more that I've watched it, I've gained a little bit more appreciation for it. Um, that's just me personally, though. And again, I'm a big Batman fan. Like that's that's like my favorite fictional character ever. So it's like, um, and I try to look at him unbiasedly too. Like, you know what I mean? Like I can recognize that the movie's not perfect. Just like, you know, I don't think the Batman was perfect. I loved it. Don't get me wrong, but there's things about it that, that, that I, you know, as a critic, I noticed that could have been better. Like, you know what I mean? But, um, but yeah, like it, it's just, I, I really do feel like though Batman has probably been the, the one superhero that they've treated the best, I think over the past whatever probably since the dark or probably since batman begins i think except for the josh reading justice league he was I, well uh, except for that yes 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 no i'll give you that, I'll give that. You. <laughs> yes yes that one hurts. that's that one that's hurts to watch yeah that's the worst that's the worst batman since batman and robin i think uh yeah i complete yeah, I letdown think, yeah, um, yeah i was just that movie is what made me angry like Justice League made me angry. <laughs> I was okay with BVS. <laughs> Justice League made me angry. Um, but yeah, it's just yeah, completely underutilized Batman in every way in that movie. Like it's just ridiculous. Like Josh Whedon should never come anywhere near another DC property in his life. <laughs> yeah, never, man. Please, yeah, never. No, but yeah. I, I totally understand what you're saying about BVS. And yeah, me personally, Batman is also my favorite fictional character as well. Like he's the whole reason I yeah. I train, I'm working out and all that stuff. And like, you should see, I have a whole right. shrine to him over here. And I, I mean, I have the statue right here and stuff. Like it's part of my yeah, table yeah. and whatnot. So uh, yeah, you know, I enjoyed it because I know the comics. I know what Zack Snyder was trying to base everything off. I knew the comics he was pulling from, but yeah. if you didn't you were completely lost, especially considering oh, no most doubt. of that yeah. movie is a lot of imagery and very little dialogue. But if you know yes. the comics and you know the imagery, but she was literally giving us imagery from the comics, which is why it was such a connect to the you know comic fans and everything. So we knew what was going on. We knew the storyline without any words needing to be spoken. Yeah. But the grounder, you know, general audience didn't. And I feel like that's where he failed. And for me, yeah. the whole, the whole reason I'm not happy with that movie is just because they try to shoehorn the Justice League in it. It went from a BVS movie yeah. to being a Donna Justice. By the end of it, they weren't even calling it Batman versus Superman. They were just calling it BVS Donna Justice. They shoved right. 10 years worth of movies into one movie when they could have yeah. just that you know, taken their time and given us a solid, decent BVS. That's, that's, that's honestly, that's fair. Like, again, even though I'm a fan of the movie, I... I understand that criticism 100%. Like the whole Aquaman flash wonder woman aspect of it doesn't need to be in the movie at all. Um, and honestly, they could have maybe done more to even establish Batman prior to this, because when people see Batman, the way he is in that movie, it's jarring to people because they don't understand necessarily what he's been through up until that point. So the, the, yes, he's a little bit more brutal than we expect him to be. But there's a reason for him to be that way in the world. It's just maybe he could have done a better job of explaining that to people, I guess. And then maybe it would be a little bit more understanding. Because the whole purpose of that movie, to me, is Batman rediscovering what it means to be a hero again. Like, that's mm -hmm. that's essentially the whole plot of the movie, in my opinion. Or the message of the movie. And, yeah, he could have probably done a better job establishing that, I think, for sure. But like you said, as a comic fan, I just put it together myself. Like, you know what I mean? So it was like, yeah, exactly. I, I look at it fans, in that way. He's at. Right. Right. Exactly. We know what he's been through. We saw the Robin suit. We saw, you know, his lines of dialogue about, you know, losing a lot of people and how he's been fighting for 20 years and he's never really like solved the problem of Gotham. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's wore him down. Like, you know what I mean? He's lost his way a little bit. He's like, he's human. He's just kind he's of literally. Yeah. Human. Right. Right, he's not, exactly. He's not a superhero, yes. so not only has it worn his body down, but it's worn him down emotionally, mentally, you yeah. know, in so many aspects and ways that all these other heroes don't really feel and get. And that's exactly. one of the reasons why I've always really connected with Batman because it's like, well, he's real. He's a, I mean, obviously you can't get to Batman status and all that stuff, but he's as real as you can be in terms of any superhero, Marvel or DC. He's a, he's a man with yeah. no actual abilities or powers. Any kind of fighting he does, he learned, he, you know, he earned his knowledge and everything. He went, he studied, he didn't just magically get all these abilities and stuff. And yeah. you know, growing up to me, it was like, well, look at Batman. He worked hard. And as long as you work hard and, you know, get the work done, you're going to accomplish yeah. what you want. You know what I mean? Exactly. Exactly.
it, that that whole philosophy that Batman has could be relatable to anyone. Like really, if you really want to get down to it, he's the most relatable superhero. Like no supernatural element to him at all. It's just a a guy who who went through a lot, personal tragedy, and picked himself up, and you know tried to make a difference because of it. You know what I mean? Like I don't know anyone who can't relate to that story. Like you know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, that's a big reason why I like him too, for sure, for sure. And I have a Batman shrine myself, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you do, man. I mean, I see the yeah. 90, 89 Batman right there in the back, so like you said. He's yeah, I always got to have so. that up there. That's yeah. where it all started for me, basically. So it was like, you know what I mean? Like, that's the movie that pretty much got me into Batman, and then I went into comics and everything else. So it was the movie that started it, and then I and then I, I went retroactively went to comics. So, so yeah, but... um. But yeah, it's yeah. He's just he's the greatest. Like, <laughs> no, yeah, I can totally agree with yeah. that, man. For me personally, it was yeah. Batman Forever that got me into it. Yeah, that's a that was a big one for my childhood too. That was the first Batman movie I saw in the theater. Um, I remember it vividly. Um, and that movie has some of the best merchandise ever. Like, it's just so eye popping. Like, I collect a lot of it, so I know. But um, yeah, the merchandise from Batman Forever was just legendary. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, like, there's something about the color scheme they used and everything. Like, everything just pops from that. Like, it's it's crazy. Definitely a guilty pleasure of mine. It's definitely Batman Forever for sure. Yeah, you know, a lot of people consider it a guilty pleasure, but in my opinion, I feel like it's just essentially a comic book movie. You know, I feel like a lot of people look at it through the eyes and lens of comic book movies nowadays, especially after the yeah. Dark Knight trilogy. And even no after Tim Burton, right. like, you know, they look at it as like, oh, well, all comic book movies, especially Batman, are supposed to be dark and gritty. But when you look at the actual comics, they're bright, they're colorful, they attract your eye and everything. And I feel like that's yeah. what Joel Schumacher was trying to bring to it. And obviously, because yeah. I've heard that there is a cut, you know, a Schumacher cut that was a lot darker and grittier. But the studio obviously yeah. meddled, got their hands on, they wanted to appeal to kids and McDonald's and all that stuff. Yeah. So I feel like it wasn't so much the colors but like the story you know i feel like the colors were there to appeal and make it look like it i felt like he was trying to bring a comic book to life in those aspects you know and that's why tommy lee jones's two face is so bright and vivid and you know the riddles yes. wearing a, a, a suit with riddles or question marks all over because they're in a comic book it's not real right. life like where where in real life are you going to see this you know right I mean? yes like I he, he brought the no go ahead uh, yeah, I was just going to say, yeah, he definitely brought the, the comic book element back into it, especially after Batman Returns, which went very dark. You know what I mean? So he kind of like lightened it up. At, and at the same time, yes, I agree. He added a, a little bit more of a, a cartoonish quality to it almost. And I don't mean that in a negative way. I'm just saying like a little bit more over the top. Like, you know what I mean? A little bit more fantastical, I think, than than the Tim Burton movies were. Um, and yeah, I, and I think it, it worked. Like, I love Batman Forever. I, I don't have anything negative to say about it. I recognize it's not a perfect movie, but it, it's still, I have a connection to it just from a personal standpoint, just growing mm -hmm. up with it. You know what I mean? So, no, yeah. but yeah. No, definitely. Yeah. And I think Val Kimmer did an amazing job as Bruce Wayne slash Batman. You know, I think he's a very underrated, yeah, he's underrated. Batman actor. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. definitely. I agree. I agree. To be honest, like I think almost all the people who have played Batman have done a really good job. Um, Outside of maybe Clooney, but I don't even think that was his fault. I think it was just the movie. Like I think in a different movie, he could have been a great Batman. But um, but yeah, like outside of him, like I think all the Batman actors brought something different to the table. And that's what I like about it too. It's like they all, like from Affleck to Pattinson to Bale to Keaton to even Kilmer, like each one of them, I have love for them for different reasons. Like you know what I mean? So it's like, and that's again why I say he's probably been treated the best out of any comic book character. I think theatrically like you know what i mean mm -hmm. no yeah definitely yeah. i think it also helps that batman has so many like slight iterations and variations of himself that you know has yeah. grown to be you know very fan friendly and fan favorite you know you have your you know i feel like people love batman no matter whether he's in his beginning stages whether he's in his prime or whether he's a veteran yeah. like in the dark knight you know what i mean and mm -hmm. we've literally gotten iterations of every single one at this point we got bail in all three essentially in a very short yeah. you know quick span but it, it was all three right. we've gotten Affleck in you know the veteran you know worn down batman and now we have essentially yep. the beginning batman with patterson yep. yep 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 yeah yeah they they've covered his whole career almost at this point so it's like 
I don't even know where they would go next, honestly. I guess Batman Beyond is the only thing they didn't cover <laughs> at this point. I think that's the only, like, era they didn't cover yet was old, old Bruce Wayne. Like, you know. Right. But, yeah, like, at this point, yeah. But I'd be interested to see, like, if they continue the Pattinson story, um, where they would go with it. Because, like, they definitely leave it in a place where they could do a continuation of it if they wanted to. So, yeah, I don't know if it's, like, if it's more intended to be a one-off or if they do have plans to carry it on, but um, I would like to see where it goes for sure. Yeah. To see him kind of develop his skills. Yeah. No, yeah. I think considering the amount of money it made, I think they are going to look to make a sequel. I mean, Matt Reeves already, you know, said he wants to, he wants to explore uh, Mr. Freeze in the next one and, you know, probably more other uh, villains. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I think personally, I think it could end up being like a six movie film franchise in my opinion. I mean, he's young. He's, you know, Batman has a lot mm-hmm. of rogues that have not had their story told. It seems like Matt Reeves wants to dive into those that haven't had their story told. And I think we right. finally have the opportunity to watch Batman actually grow. We saw yeah. a little bit in the Dark Knight trilogy, but like I said, it was in a very short span. Like, technically, if you look at yeah. it, he was only Batman for like two, maybe three years in that yeah. continuity. It's like, but then yeah. it's like, oh, <laughs> yeah. so. We, I think we have time with this new franchise to where we can actually see him go from being, you know, a beginner to actually being maybe Batman Prime and ending it there at least. Right, right. Yeah, no, that's ex- that's an exciting prospect, honestly. To just yeah, that, to be able to spend a longer amount of time, I think, with Batman, with a version of Batman, would be great. Like, yeah, like because I mean, that's what we've been doing in the comics all this time, right? I mean, seeing so many iterations of him and seeing him go through so many different things, it's like. I would like to sit with the character for a while and just see where it goes. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't mind that if they made a bunch of movies with Pattinson. I, I thought Pattinson did a great job. So, um, and I was always on his on his bandwagon too. Like I know a lot of people weren't, but I, I thought he was a great choice from the from the very beginning. So because um, I, I I just know that he's a quality actor. A lot of people judged him because of Twilight, and but I knew he was better than that. You know what I mean? Like I had mm-hmm. seen him in other stuff and. I was like, yeah, that, it, honestly, the casting made a lot of sense, and, and it worked out, and it worked out, so. <clears throat> no, yeah, definitely. I mean, I'll admit, I was one of those people that was like, oh, really, the sparkly vampire guy? You know, when they first <laughs> him and everything, I was like, oh, man, yeah. you gotta be kidding me. I mean, but another reason why I was kind of like that was because for a long time, I've been feeling like I want a new actor to come in and play Batman, like somebody that isn't known, somebody fresh that isn't right. a, a name you know i just want someone to come in out of nowhere and just have a chance at batman that i know is going to put their all in because this is their chance you know what i mean whereas you keep putting in celebrities and stars in, it's like it's just another movie to them you know whereas you give this right. rising star a chance and if yeah I, I feel like they can come up to the to the chance you know i feel like they can really yeah. the role. yeah no doubt but i i honestly i think um because Patton's, this is part of the reason why he worked is that I do feel like he has a little bit to prove almost like, I feel like he is still trying to, to, to shake that stigma of the, of the twilight movies. And I think that helped him in the Batman. I think it helped him bring it a little bit more. You know what I mean? And cause I saw it, I was like, the whole thing with him is that like nobody, everybody was like, well, he's not intimidating in the slightest. So how's he going to be Batman? You know what I mean? <laughs> but that, but that opening scene, like nailed it immediately he was instantly mm-hmm. intimidating like you know what i mean it was like he totally just embraced the whole character and i yeah just like i, I don't know like i think honestly he he's not like my favorite batman of all time but i really do think he has a chance to grow into something special like you know what i mean so it'd be interesting to see yeah oh yeah definitely man i totally agree with the, everything that you said with with uh you know all yeah. that you know like i said I, yeah. at first i was like really Patterson, but the second I saw that first trailer, I was like, you know what? Yeah. I'm in. You changed my mind. Yeah. Like, you know, okay. Yep. And then I saw the movie and I was like, you son of a bitch. Okay, I'm in. And <laughs> come to HBO, I've seen it about six times since Monday. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah I haven't watched I saw it twice repeat. in the theater. Um, I haven't watched it on HBO Max yet, but I'm going to. I'm waiting for my wife because she wants to watch it too. So I've been kind of waiting for her, but I could probably watch it and then watch it again with her, honestly. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I've just had it on repeat. You know, I saw it, I think, 
four or five times in theater by itself. And then, yeah, now that it's been in, on HBO, I just have it on repeat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. I'll, I'll get to that point at some point. I honestly did that with the Snyder Cut. I'm not going to lie to you. I watched it several times in a row. So. That movie, yeah, that, that was a great movie, you know. And I feel like yeah. – it was a great movie because it was released the way it was, you know, on streaming and stuff, you know, had it been released in theaters, he would have had it cut it. He would have done a bunch of stuff yep. to it, but yeah, yep. the way it was released, it was a great movie. I have to admit. Yeah. It was the four hour um, runtime, like um, didn't affect me in the slightest. Like mm -hmm. to me, like those four hours flew by quicker than some two hour movies do for me. Like, it's like, mm -hmm. like I was totally invested the whole time. Like I was like, this is what, he was building to the whole time. It was just like WB was kind of meddling with the vision. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. just let the man do what he's going to do. Like some people are going to like it. Some people are going to hate it, but at the very least he'll have a complete vision. You know what I mean? Like, and I really appreciated the fact that they allowed him to release it, honestly, because he deserved it. Honestly, the way he, that he was kind of like shunned during the making of it. And like how they kind of like backdoor, like basically fired him. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't really care for how he was treated in that manner. So like, I definitely am a big proponent of like artistic integrity. It's like, if you hired the man, let him do what he's, let him do what he was hired to do. Like, you know what I mean? Like, don't, don't mess with it the whole time. Cause it's, it's going to come out and turn out like Justice League. You know what I mean? So it's like it. Yeah. So I was a big fan of the Snyder cut and it's a four hour movie. And I think I've seen it like five times, six times now or something like that. Um, and yeah, I, can't get enough of it. So and I'm sure the Batman's going to be similar when I start watching that again. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, definitely, man. I can definitely agree with that too. You know, first time I saw Justice League, it, I saw it at my friend's house because he had HBO Max. The next day, I signed up for HBO Max and I started watching it again and again. Yeah, you know. Yeah, so. it was just. Yeah, I actually like took off of work that day when it came out. Actually, <laughs> that's how serious I was about it. I was like, I'm dedicating my whole day to watching this movie. Uh, yeah, it was my favorite movie of that year, honestly. Like, and, and you're talking to someone who's burnt out on comic book movies, but I was still invested in that movie. So that should tell you something right there. So, <laughs> oh yeah, I think it had to do with the fact that he was able to treat these characters with enough time and respect. You know, yes, then it wasn't rushed. That, yes, no, exactly. It yes, was, yeah, it wasn't rushed like you were saying with Batman versus Superman, where he just kind of shoehorned things into it. He had enough time with everyone. Yeah. It, definitely he's a guy who likes to i guess i i think he's he's one of those guys who would, who would definitely prefer to make four hour movies every time you know that's not the that's not the hollywood thing to do you know what i mean mm -hmm. so it's like he's kind of like in a, in a place where like he doesn't really fit into the hollywood mold i don't think necessarily mm -hmm. but streaming seems like the best route for him and i noticed he's been releasing a lot of his movies on streaming now so it makes sense so <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, hopefully maybe Discovery will see that, you know, there is value in him coming back and he can maybe wrap up his yeah. vision and stuff because I think it was, it, like you said, some people were going to like it, some people weren't. I feel like a lot of people didn't like where he was leading to, like, you know, the evil Superman and all this nightmare stuff. But I thought it yeah. was an interesting route. I thought it was somewhere that I did want to see more explored and stuff and, you know, seeing yeah. the heroes in that, you know, kind of apocalyptic kind of like, we're the, we're the that's it, this is it, this is us. Yeah. The last stand type of scenario, you know, we're up against Superman and Dark Side. Like, it doesn't get any bigger and badder than that. I mean, you right. have the biggest bad guy and the biggest hero up against, yeah. you know, a Aquaman or what was it, Cyborg, Flash, Batman, and Deathstroke. You know, and it's, Deathstroke, it's like, like this ragtag group of guys that are all that's left for humanity, basically. Yeah. It's, exactly. yeah, I, I would watch a nightmare movie. I would. Honestly, I would watch a nightmare sequence movie. And that was supposed to be, a, there was talks that that was going to be like his third Justice League movie because he had a sequel plan for this one. And then like there was going to be a third one where he would actually explore more of the nightmare sequence stuff. And I, I would I would have been totally down for that. I, I'm all for new interpretations. Like that's what comics do all the time, right? They bring in new writers, new new artists, and they do their fresh spin on Batman, Superman, whatever. Um, that's how we got, you know, great stories like the dark Knight returns and like you got Frank Miller just coming in and just rewriting his version of Batman. Like they should do the same thing with movies, like let directors come in. And as long as they're true to the character and respect the character, kind of let them take liberties here and there and do like a fresh interpretation. Like I'm all for that. Like, honestly, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's essentially what Matt Reeves did with the Batman. 
Yeah, it is. Yep, 100%. And he's a talented filmmaker, so I'm glad that they allowed him the freedom to do that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, let these guys direct. Like, this is what they do. They're, they're, they're directors for a reason. Like, you know what I mean? Exactly. Like, don't get in the way. Like, yeah. Same thing with Nolan, right? They, like, they let him do what he wanted, and he created a masterpiece. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, mm -hmm. like just, yeah, let these guys do what they got to do, so. <clears throat> no, yeah, definitely. You know, I think hopefully Warner Brothers has seen that. I'm surprised the previous owners and CEOs of Warner Brothers didn't meddle more in the Batman movie. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's so I'm glad they tried. That. They tried, from what I understand, but um, Matt Reeves basically threatened to quit if they did. So, oh. <laughs> so good for him. <laughs> yeah, good for him. And look, he ended up creating, a, like you said, a masterpiece. You know what I mean? I mean, yes. in my opinion, in the most recent comic book times, it is a masterpiece with all the combination of storytelling elements, characters, uh, practical effects. I mean, you have to admit, even the cast gave it the raw from John Turturro as you know Falcone to um yeah. Colin Farrell as the penguin I mean he gave it an amazing yeah. performance you know re-watching it constantly I'm just like god damn this guy's performance he went all out <laughs> for this you know what I mean oh yeah Colin Farrell is my favorite part of the movie by far yeah. like his penguin was just flat out amazing like I wasn't even expecting him to bring that energy to the penguin but he did he knocked it out of the park like honestly exactly. like yeah like yeah, stole the show by far. <laughs> Definitely, you know, it was supposed to be the Riddler, but all of a sudden you're thinking Penguin. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah, like I want to see more Penguin now. I'll tell you that much. Like, show me more of that guy. He did a great job. Like, yeah, he's getting his own show too, apparently. So that's cool. No, yeah. What's think up, what, Oh, what's up, man? I, and I think what was great is that he actually used actual prosthetics too. It wasn't like CGI and all this stuff. Once again, going back to that practical effects stuff. Yeah, he was hidden in the in there too. Like, like when you talk about actor disappearing into the role, like if you didn't know that was him, you would never know that was not Colin Farrell. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I, that's what I like about acting when they just like disappear into a role like that. Like, that's just crazy to think about. But yeah, he did a phenomenal job for sure. No, yeah, definitely. So we have a question here. Do you think the Flash movie is still going to happen now with everything going on around its main star? Um, I, I hope not. Um, <laughs> everything I've heard about the Flash movie, it sounds like a disaster. Uh, so just like from inside information, rumors, stuff like that. Um, it just sounds to me like it's going to be a mess. I don't think they're going to do Michael Keaton justice. I don't think they're going to do Ben Affleck justice. Um, and I, I do think they were on the verge of ruining the DCEU even more so than they already had with this movie. Um, because this was going to be like a reset of sorts. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think they were heading down a, the wrong path. And I honestly, I think this Ezra Miller stuff, as much as I don't want to see, I, I, you know, he's got problems, obviously, and I hope he gets better. But it's like, it's almost a blessing in disguise because I really do feel like that movie should not be released. <laughs> like, I have a bad feeling about it. As much as I love Flash and I want a Flash movie, because I love the Flash. Yeah, I think he's a great mm -hmm. character who hasn't been utilized enough at all. But that movie just, it, it doesn't seem like it was going to turn out very well um, based on everything I've heard. So, yeah, I, I think the new owners, if they know it's good for them, they just cut their losses and just not even release it or just release it on streaming and be like, Oh, this doesn't really mean anything, but here it is. Like, you know what I mean? Like it's, That's it's not anything like that. It's just, you know, an elsewhere, it's an elseworlds tale or something like that. Like, but yeah, it's, yeah, I, I don't, I, I was interested in the movie at first, but now I'm just like completely shut off from it. Yeah. I'm just not interested. So I kind of hope it doesn't happen, honestly. <laughs> oh yeah. Same. Yeah. yeah from, from the yeah. start when they announced that Michael Keen was coming back, I had my, uh, I had my worries, you know, like I said, it seems like anytime they try to bring back stuff from our childhood that we really connect and love, they try to just yeah. use it as a mask to something that they want to do and say, well, yep. it's the same character. So how can you be mad? Right. How can you not like it? It's it's him. It's him. But it's like, right. but when it's you not him. The, exactly. <laughs> the dialogue. Yeah. Not him, right. It's not him. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. It's that's a real problem in Hollywood. It's almost like they think we're stupid, and it, they could just slap the name on there and just expect everyone to go along with it. Like I love Michael Keaton, obviously. Like he's my he was my Batman growing up, right? So it's like, but I don't want to see him brought into a movie. And belittle just to build up another character, which is what they do a lot these days. And I could definitely see that happening, especially with the rumors that 
you know, Batgirl was going to take over for him. We can already see where that's going. You know, you know what I mean? So it's just, yeah, like, I just have a really bad feeling about it. Like, as much as I would love to see Michael Keaton one more time, I don't think it's going to turn out well. So it's just better that it doesn't happen. <laughs> like, you know, like that's oh, really yeah. like after Luke Skywalker, I'm just like, don't ruin any more of my heroes. Okay. <laughs> we live in the past. Let me remember them as they were. <laughs> right. Exactly. Like I'm tired of my heroes being just torn apart. Please just let them, let them be, let them rest. Like, but, yeah. <laughs> and I see, and see, I think that's what some of the appeal was to those characters back in the day is that their stories were left open for us to imagine what came next. It's, yes. you know, and nowadays they're trying to tell us a lot, same thing with prequels. I feel like stuff that are prequels to things that were, you know, from back in the day, it's like, do we really need to know how certain characters got certain ways? Like, like the Han Solo prequel was such a slap in the fucking face. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> yes, it was. Oh, what's your um... name? Han. Oh, where, are you with a group? No, I'm by myself. I'm solo. Oh, so that's gonna be your last name, Solo. Han Solo. Yeah, the you, dumbest you thing. Tell, you, you mean to tell me yeah. his name wasn't just already Han Solo? Why? Why right. can't his name? Why? I, I really want to know why. <laughs> why? Why can't this character from a space sci-fi film just be born yeah. with the name Han Solo? Is it so weird out there that you have to physically give him the name in the prequel? Yeah, it's it, that's how lazy it is. It's like that that's what you wanted to accomplish with this movie is just by basically deconstructing Han Solo, who's kind of a mystery, but that's kind of the appeal of him. Like he's a smuggler, you don't know a lot about him. Like let it be that way. Like you could have had him and Chewie just on an adventure and people probably would have loved it. The origin story is where you start to, to start to ruin it cuz Han Solo doesn't need an origin. Like, part of his appeal is that he doesn't have an origin. We don't know where he came from. We don't know who he is, really. He's just a cool smuggler guy that we all thought was, you know, the coolest guy in the galaxy. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, it's, yeah, they, like, Disney has this thing where they have to over-analyze and over-explain everything. Like, it's just, I, and I don't know why they do that. I, I really don't. Because it just, deli it, it removes all the mystique from these characters. And they've done it countless times with Star Wars characters. Like, we just saw it with Boba Fett, too completely removed his mystique in every way like nothing special about him anymore I it's just, just like why are you up. doing that yeah <laughs> it's like I why was just about to bring that up yeah these characters are 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 beloved for a reason and it was because we didn't know anything about them like that's part of their appeal like you know it's just like i don't yeah it, it, star wars is one that um hurt me more than anything honestly it's just oh yeah cuz that was my I grew up on it. Like it was a family thing. I watched it with my mom. I watched it with my stepdad, my yep. dad. Like it was, it was a family affair, like star Wars every year, like, or whenever they came out, like it was an event. It was like, Oh, when we don't have nothing else to watch, we'll watch star Wars. Like, and they completely ruined my love of star Wars. <laughs> like in every way, like I have no connection to it anymore. And it hurts more than anything, honestly. But, um, no, oh, yeah. 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 I can yeah. totally understand that. I mean, you see the bold that helmet right behind me. Like, both that yeah. was my, or he still is my favorite character. I'm not going to let the new series ruin what oh, yeah, before, no, you yeah. know what I mean? He still right. is a badass character in my mind, and that may exist and whatnot, but growing up, both that was both that, and that's what I re resonate with and everything. And so he's still one of my favorite characters. And surprisingly, they didn't do too bad with The Mandalorian. It's not yeah. horrible, it's not terrible. You know what I mean? For right. Me, once again, it's enjoyable. It's a character. Mm -hmm. I feel like I feel like that's the the Boba Fett show that should have been Boba Fett. Right. Well, you know, again, that goes that goes back to the same thing, though. It's like let's take everything that's cool about Boba Fett, remove it, and then put it into our own character, and then make then pass it off as our own. Like you know what I mean? Like like Mandalorian basically is Boba Fett. Like, but they. Instead of just giving Boba Fett his story, they decided to make up a new character and then try to pass it off as their own. And it's like, and that's part of the problem. Like, stop degrading these old characters to make your characters look better. Like, you should be able to just write good characters. Otherwise, you shouldn't be making movies. Like, or, or TV shows. Like, you know what I mean? It's, no, yeah. yeah, it's, it's really unfortunate. Like, the, the path that they've taken, like, I, I would love for someone to buy Star Wars and not be under disney's umbrella anymore but i know that's never going to happen but uh yeah, that's what no. really needs to happen in order for us to ever get good star wars movies again in my opinion so <clears throat> yeah 
Yeah, unfortunately, like you said, the mouse has way too much cash, and he knows how much that yeah. property is worth and everything, so they're never going to let that go. No. Uh, the only way that it could happen maybe is if like people really do lose interest in it, and I know the interest is lower than it's ever been probably, um, and people just stop supporting it, and at some point it'll, it will lose its value, but it's going to take a long time before that happens. Oh, so, um, yeah, yeah, definitely. But I don't know about you, but do you want to pay $5,000 for a Star trek two-night excursion <laughs> at Disney World? I know, no. I know. <laughs> What's <laughs> funny is when, when I first heard about that hotel, this is what I wasn't upset with Star Wars yet, really. Um, I was excited about it. I was like, that sounds like a cool thing. Like, I would love to go there. But as the years went on, I you know, got tired of the way they were treating Star Wars. And, and then when the price came out, I was just like, Jesus, like, how is anyone ever going to be able to afford to go to that unless you're like rich? Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like is this just for the, the extremely wealthy people? Because there's a lot of regular people out there who are Star Wars fans, too. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, they shouldn't have to mortgage their house to go to a hotel. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> For two nights. For two nights. Right, exactly. Like, it's, yeah, I, I despise Disney with every inch of my body. So, <laughs> if you ever watch my channel, you'll get that impression real quick. I'm not a Disney guy at all. Like, they're the bane of my existence right now. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't hate them as much as you do, obviously, but I'm not happy with them. You know, I mean, even going back to the theme park and everything, you know, I feel like they did their pass holders like really dirty. They like just instantly yeah. took away their passes when everything happened. They didn't even give them any kind of you know, <laughs> say or anything. It was just like, okay, we're going to take this away. We're going to reinstate this new thing and all this other stuff to the point where I had just actually bought a pass. And I, you know, I love Disneyland as a theme park. Like it's fun to go to living here in California. Yeah. I grew up going. And so it's, it's fun, but now it's like, well, you have to make reservations. You got to do this. It's like, it kind of takes away from the past and being able to go where you want to. And so yeah. I don't know. I was like, you know what? I'm not going to put my money, you know, and that's a, that's a, what we can do. That's the only thing we can do is just not put our money there. And obviously with Disney being such a big company, my money's not going to make a difference, but at least I can put that money that I was going to put there to other things that I want. Right. Yeah. No, it's, you have to, you have to talk with your wallet sometimes. And I don't, I don't support Disney in the slightest. I I'm able to watch some of their shows, but I don't pay for it. I'll just put it that way. So, <laughs> so I just watch them for content reasons. Um, but I would never give them my money in a million years. Like not even the movies in the theater. Like if I can't see it for free, I'm not going. So it's like, because they've already shown to me that they don't have a real respect for the things that I love. And that goes for Marvel too. And in many ways, like, I'm not, I, I said I'm a DC guy, which I am, but I have a lot of love for Marvel, too. Um, but I don't like the way that they treated Marvel, either, for the most part. Some things, yes, but other things, no. But um, it's just, Disney, to me, is like, they basically sum up all my problems with entertainment. It's just like, to me, they just make things to make money. There's no artistic integrity it's whatsoever. Cookie cutter. It's very cookie-cutter, yes. It's formulaic. Um like the entire MCU is as successful as they are. It's a formula. Like it's very clearly a formula that they're running. Um, and they tried to apply that same formula to Star Wars and it didn't work. But it's like, yes, like to me, they have no creativity whatsoever. I, I say this all the time in my videos. Disney is the enemy of creativity. And I strongly believe that. Which is crazy to think because they used to be the epitome of creativity. <laughs> like they were the, you know what I mean? Like as a yeah. kid, like I, I was, I loved Disney as a kid. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, the old Disney movies, I watch them all the time. The animated, like, classics. And my, my kid's room is going to be modeled after some of those movies because me and my wife both loved them growing up. You know what I mean? But modern mm -hmm. Disney is not the same company. <laughs> like, it's not the same oh, company. Oh, yeah, definitely all. not. Yeah. Yeah. No, they, but, um, like, they don't even treat their own properties, you know, with respect either. You know, like, when you look at some no. of these remakes that they make, it's like, yeah. they can't even treat their own properties with respect. So how can we expect them to treat these other franchises and properties with respect that they've bond. Exactly. Exactly. Like when I saw the, the remake to a lion King, I was disgusted. Like, <laughs> I guess like, the lion King was like the, the movie, the, the big Disney movie that came out when I was a kid. Right. Like it's like a huge deal. And I remember going to the theater and having it on VHS and I watched that remake and it was just completely soulless. Like that's the only way I can describe it. Like, 
completely devoid of any of the charm that the original Lion King had. Like, just boring and bland and just an obvious cash grab. Like, that's what it was. Like, you know what I mean? And it it, it hurts my soul because it's like, yeah, like, I love these movies, but, like, I just can't. I, I, I can't get along with the way that they are handling them. Like, it's just, yeah. So, it is what it is. No, yeah, definitely. Casey says he's glad he has his original Star Wars on VHS still. Yeah, man, I I have so many Star Wars box sets because they release so many of them. <laughs> like, I just collect Star Wars box sets, basically, yeah. of the original three movies. It's like, yeah, they had special editions. and Yeah, I have unlimited. Like, I have, I think Star Wars is, the original Star Wars trilogy is probably the thing I have the most of on physical media. Like, the most versions of it. Like, Blu-ray, DVD, like, five different, actually, you could see them right out there. There's, like, five different... <laughs> box sets up here that are just star wars like it's like yeah it, yeah star wars was like a huge deal for me like it was like one of my probably the thing that had the most influence on me as a kid and it just like they completely killed all my interest in it it's it's terrible i hate it <laughs> i dude i can completely agree with you because i was the same way you know it was batman and star wars for me you know tied right there you know growing up it was always them two and stuff and Yep. Lately, yeah. up until this last Batman movie, it was a very sad existence for myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's been rough. It's definitely been rough. So, yeah, yeah I'm right there with you. I'm right there with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but th it seems like hopefully things are starting to change, at least on the DC front with Batman, at least. So that's, that's something I hope positive so. yes. to look forward to, yes. you know. So, yeah, as long as they don't start meddling again, I think we'll be fine. Um, but we'll see. <laughs> We'll see what the new owners do. <laughs> like I said, I don't think they spent $43 billion to not make more money. So I think they saw yes. what Matt Reeves did with his interpretation. I think they're going to put some faith in him, maybe throw a little extra cash in the next one. And uh, I hope so. He gets some, yeah. you know, something even better. Yeah, I would I would love to see it. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, I, we can only really go up from here. I would like to say we can only go up from here because we're – pretty much at an all-time low but um you never know it could get worse i guess it could get worse so we'll see that's all not right <laughs> yeah right so man what would you say are some of your favorite classic films uh let's see um as far as classic, yeah as far as classics do you mean like do you mean necessarily anything like older 2000 anything before 2000 anything before 2000 okay um well, I mean, one of my favorite films, the classic of all classics, is probably The Godfather, I would say. Um, another movie that I grew up watching with my family, so I have that connection with it. But um, mm. I, I think it's a perfect movie, pretty much the best movie ever made. Um, so, yeah, that, that would probably be up there on my list. Um, I'm a big Rocky guy, so a lot of most of the Rocky movies, I'm definitely um, in on them. I'm actually a big Rocky Three guy. I don't. I, I know not many people can say that, but um, <laughs> Rocky Three is one of my uh, one of my favorite movies growing up because uh, it had what the wrestling. It, it? Oh, okay. it had the wrestling connection. That's what it was for me. I made the connection because I was a big wrestling kid, and also so like to see Hulk Hogan and Rocky and Mr. T all in a movie together. <laughs> it was just very appealing to me. Um, <laughs> so that that's where that connection happened. Um, yeah, as far as other things, I mean. I say pre two thousands. It's pretty much your standard stuff, like your Back to the Futures, uh, your Terminators, Aliens, uh, Predator. Um, I'm also a big Quentin Tarantino fan. Um, he's probably my favorite director of all time. So uh, pretty much, and he's got, in my opinion, he has a flawless resume. He's never made a bad movie. So, <laughs> so like yeah, anything that he's made, um, yeah, I'm I'm one hundred percent a supporter of. Um, Jaws was another big movie when I was growing up that it was a heavy influence on me for sure. Um, yeah, just um, pretty much your typical movies, I guess you would hear in this conversation. But it, it honestly, they're classics for a reason, right? I mean, <laughs> it's like I don't have any problem saying that that these movies are my favorite because it's like they're really good movies and they and they're what got me into liking movies or wanting to even make movies someday because that is an ultimate goal that I have someday. So it would be like, so yeah, it's like, yeah, all that stuff. Like I just, yeah, I love it to death. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's pretty much most of them. I would say. 
Of course, that Batman good. movies. <laughs> obviously, obviously, you got those. Movies. Yeah, of course, Batman movies. Yes. <laughs> so, what about more modern films? Anything after two thousands? What are some movies that really stuck with you? Um. Yeah. So, uh, I was thinking about this actually because I don't get asked that question too much. Um. Usually, it's more about the older <laughs> stuff. But um, uh, some one, some of them that I thought of initially that stick out to me. Um, uh, Mad Max: Fury Road is one of them that sticks out to me. Um, I really enjoyed that movie. Just a visual masterpiece, in my opinion. Um, Joker is one that sticks out to me. Um, I love Joker. I've seen it probably a billion times at this point. Um, watch it pretty frequently. I just love everything about that movie. That movie blew me away the first time I saw it. Like, I was like dumbfounded when I left the theater. I was like, I, I didn't even. I went into it not even knowing what to expect, and I just loved every minute. Of it. Um, no, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, once Upon a Time in Hollywood is another one that I really love. Um, again, I'm a Tarantino guy. To me, um, just as good as his best movie, Pulp Fiction. I think they're one and two. I love both of those movies to death. Um, probably two of my biggest influences, um, for sure, would be those two movies. The Dark Knight, of course, is another one. Um, I'm trying to think. There was one more I was going to say. Uh, oh, as far as comic book movies, because I always talk about how comic book movies are I've kind of just gotten tired of them, but there was a time when they were making some comic book movies that were different than others. And Logan was one that really stood out to me also. Um, yes. I, I, I Like Logan is one of the comic, one of the few comic book movies that I actually felt emotional while watching it somewhat. Cause yeah. I was like being a kid and kind of like watching Hugh Jackman take the whole, you know, the whole journey from the beginning all the way until his final moment. It was like, to me, like I didn't realize how strong of a connection I had to him as the character <laughs> until I watched that movie. Like, you know what I mean? And then I'm oh, like, yeah. wow, like, I love everything about Hugh Jackman. It's Wolverine now. Like, it's like, it just, that movie hammered it home. It was like, yeah, Logan was, yeah. One of those comic book movies that I feel like doesn't get enough attention. Like, you know what I, you know what I mean? So, so yeah, that was definitely one of them too. So, so yeah, there's there's, there's a bunch. Um, I'm a big like uh, classic director guy. So like, so like anything from like Scorsese, Tarantino, um, David Fincher's another one um, with like Seven and 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 uh, Fight Club and stuff like that. Like these type of guys are the guys who influence me uh, quite a bit. And just like yeah, like to me the classic directors are still the guys who are putting out the best content even to this day like you know what i mean like they haven't lost their edge at all like like i just watched um who was it i think it was was this, uh, yeah i just watched no i just watched uh fincher's last movie and like it's completely unlike any other movie he's ever made and i was just like this is what hollywood's missing right now they need guys like him to come in and like deliver these original ideas again and it's just like they're the types of things that the types of guys that excite me as far as the movies they make. But um, yeah, Christopher Nolan's another one. That's another one. Yeah, anything he makes, I'm in on. <laughs> Pretty oh, much. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh, yeah one yeah, of the my favorite movie from him, non Batman, is Interstellar. Uh, yeah. That's I, I, lo I love Interstellar. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of my favorites. So. So yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. That's definitely. pretty much as far as like modern movies. Yeah, that's pretty much the ones that I prefer. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> All right, well, time for the harder question, probably the hardest question that any movie reviewer or lover can be asked. <laughs> Top five of all time, man. What are they? <laughs> you do you, you realize this is a very hard question for me. Um, oh, yeah. You don't know how many times I've tried to um, make this list and make a video about it, and I always just stop doing it because it's just – it's too <laughs> – it, it's, too, it's too much pressure on me, I guess. I don't know because um, it's a very hard thing to hammer down, but – I think I kind of hammered it down for you enough, at least for today. Um, uh, <laughs> it might change tomorrow. <laughs> right, exactly, yeah. So as far as my favorite movies of all time, my top five, I guess I'd say. Um, one would be um, Pulp Fiction. Um, yeah, that's the movie that got me into Tarantino and um, I think is – I, no, I, I do think it's his best movie. And just for the dialogue alone, um, when you could – keep my attention through a whole movie using mostly dialogue i know you're doing something right and that's something that he's really good at and pulp fiction is one of them uh the empire strikes back is probably in my top five 
uh, my favorite Star Wars movie. Um, to this day, um, I don't think we've ever seen a sci-fi movie on that scale pull off what that movie pulled off. Like, I can only imagine what it must have been like to watch that movie in the theaters and to get the, you know, the big reveal at the end and all that. Like, to me, like, George Lucas completely outdone himself with Empire. And I don't think anything would ever touch that in the Star Wars universe ever. Um, another movie is Predator. Um, Predator is, in my opinion, the greatest action movie ever made. Um, I'm a big action really? guy, 80 guy. Yes. Um, and I know a lot of people say, you know, your Terminator 2s, your Die Hards. I love both those movies too, don't get me wrong. But Predator is the greatest action movie ever made, in my opinion. I love that movie to death. Like, quotable for days, just like such a simple concept. And then just like they just did the most with the least. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I just, I love that about that. Um, another one that um, is might be surprising to people, but it's the movie that I've seen the most in my lifetime. It's uh, Beetlejuice, actually. Um, Beetlejuice is probably the <laughs> most unique movie I've ever seen. I still think it's one of the most unique movies ever made because it's just like completely ridiculous and out of nowhere, but it works. But um, that was a movie that I watched on repeat as a kid, apparently. Like my parents would like, when I was, you know, being a pain, put on Beetlejuice and it would just distract me. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> so it was like, I've seen that movie more than anything. I could, I can quote every line in it watch it like it's just like it's forever burned into my head um and then i guess the the fifth one i, I was a toss-up between like godfather or the dark knight but it's it, it, i could say both of them we'll just say it's a tie um <laughs> <laughs> i'll cheat a little bit um the as far as the dark knight goes it was the batman movie i waited my whole life for that, that's the that's the way i always describe it like um the last i'd say five minutes of batman begins and into the dark knight is like peak Batman for me. Like that's like, that's where it was like, I, I like I went to see that movie five times in the theater. I think I think that's the one the one movie I've seen the most times in the theater is The Dark Knight. Um, definitely, it just had such a profound impact on me as a Batman fan and as a movie fan. Like it was both best of both worlds. Like you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Great film, oh, yeah. and great Batman at the same time. Like, and then of course The Godfather. And I I don't have to really say anything about the godfather that people haven't already said um again greatest movie ever made so that's probably my my top five somewhere in there again i could i could switch some stuff out if i really wanted to but uh, <laughs> for for these purposes i'll, I'll say those for five. this hour yes exactly <laughs> <laughs> no yeah so that's a great list man that's a good list you get you pull from a little bit of everything and stuff so yeah you know i mean you definitely can see that and the inspiration yeah. that it's had on you and everything and yeah i mean i think on those top five lists you have to cheat a little bit you know sometimes <laughs> you do it's i've tried to do top 10 lists and struggled it's like there's so many movies that had an impact on you, you know what i mean it's just like like back to the future i felt bad about leaving that out to me another perfect movie like That's terminator I, I felt yeah i felt bad about leaving that out like it's like it, it, there's so many movies that just had a profound impact on me it's just like it's very hard to narrow it down to five but if i had to say influential as far as like the movies that stuck with me the most it's probably those ones yeah so <clears throat> well that's good man so along with you know movies and stuff i mean you don't do too much toy collecting but i think you've decided to start dipping a little bit into toy collecting right so what yes. you decided to start looking at to like pick up and stuff? What appeals to you? Newer stuff, older stuff? What um, well, I was obviously a big action figure kid as when I, when I was younger. Um, I had a ton of action figures, and um, like that's what I would get every for every gift. Like someone would buy me an action figure. Like it was just like I had a, a gajillion of them. But um, and the beautiful thing about it is my mom kept all my toys, so she didn't get rid of them. Um, mm -hmm. so a couple of years ago, I got all those bins and I started going through them and I kind of just kind of, it got the nostalgic feeling going again. And so I started collecting again, um, mostly vintage, but then when I actually met Rocco, um, I started to do more modern stuff because I would watch his videos and like, he would kind of get me interested in certain things. So, so I do a little bit of both. Like I do vintage stuff, obviously anything Batman related, I, I collect, um, anything movie related, like movie toys, I collect. Um, but yeah, I also do modern stuff. Like what really actually got me into more modern collecting was that I noticed 
a lot of these big companies started tackling properties that I had a connection with. So it was like, I would see NECA doing horror figures. I was like, oh, that's cool. Like, I want to do that. I would mm-hmm. see McFarlane doing the DC multiverse figures. So I started collecting those. Um, so it's, that's really how it happened. Or the NECA Ninja Turtle figures, same thing. Um, so it was like, yeah, like I just saw these big companies like starting to tackle these these properties that I loved. And I was like, well, I might as well get in on it. Like, And, and now I can't stop. So <laughs> <laughs> I also started yeah, collecting. I yeah, and I also started collecting WWE figures too. So, uh, which I don't even watch wrestling anymore, but I collect the older when I did watch it. Like, you know what I mean? Mm, so I started yeah. collecting them. So, um, so yeah, like now I'm like all in on it. Like that's that's pretty much where I'm at. But yeah, like I have a, a room dedicated just to toys. I'm hoping to do a toy room tour at some point. Um, because yeah, I just got it all set up again finally. Um, so yeah, so hopefully coming down the pike, you'll see that on my channel at some point, but, um, yeah, I just, something about toy collecting that just, uh, I, yeah, like I, I was away from it for a long time and then I just jumped right back into it. Like it, like I never left. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, so oh, yeah, man. yeah, I think that's what happens with a lot of people, you know, I think they get out of it for a while and then they kind of come back to it and they realize, you know, I think it's just that nostalgic connection and stuff, you know what I mean? It reminds us of what we had growing up and those properties yeah. that we love and stuff, you know, and, and nowadays they're really good, you know, like toys, they're really good right. representations and we're getting representations yeah. that we've never gone before nowadays, you know, like NECA doing yeah. back to the future figures. Like I never would have never thought we'd yeah. gone back to the future figures. And now they're giving us very highly detailed, you know, yep. back to the future figures. Yeah. 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 Like, and that was one of the first ones that I got actually, when I started collecting it, I got the Marty McFly from uh, back to the future too. That was one of the first NECA figures I think I got, actually. Because um, I only just started collecting NECA, N- NECA not that too long ago. Um, and yeah, Marty McFly was like the first one I got, I think. And I was just blown away by it. I was like, I can't believe this is even a real thing. Like, you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah moving figures obviously are a big, very appealing to me. Like, so it's like, <laughs> that's why NECA, I jumped right in on them. So um, I do feel like they're they're. I haven't heard much from them lately. I don't know what's going on with them, but uh, <laughs> I, w- I would prefer if they make them release more figures. It seems like they slowed down a lot. I don't know, but um, or maybe I just got them all too quick. I don't know what it is, but um, but oh, yeah, they just released a uh, Griff. Yeah, I know. That's I need to get that because I'm more into the Back to the Future two figures than I am the Back to the Future one figures. So I definitely want Griff. So yeah. yeah, and I want the Doc Brown from the future too. I haven't found him yet either. So oh, yeah, um, I found him either. Yeah, he's a great figure. No, yeah, no, I haven't seen. I haven't even seen him anywhere. Like it's just yeah, like they are hard to come by. That's one problem with NECA, but um, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes. <clears throat> yeah, but um, so somebody asked in the chat. What's your favorite weed related movie? It is sports. <laughs> uh, Friday. Friday probably. Friday. Is my favorite. Yeah, yeah. I love Friday. That's yeah, great weed comedy. <laughs> 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 yes, Smokey was the coolest guy in the world back when I was younger. Uh, I love Friday. It was great. So yeah, I definitely oh, yeah. have to say that Friday. Yeah. Yeah, mine would either be uh Days and Confused or Up in Smoke. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of great weed movies out there. So, a lot to pick from. Yeah, so oh, yeah. I saw Casey said Friday also. Yep, it is yeah, Friday. Yeah. <laughs> so, Matt, what are your plans for 2022? Anything new and exciting besides, obviously, you know, welcoming a new kid to the world and whatnot? But, like, for your channel, yeah. what's, what's there exciting to come? Well, um, I think uh, this year, obviously, I want to keep hustling, keep growing, of course. But um, my main goal, I think, with the channel is to do more um, original content. Um, and that involves either just skits or it could mean as much as like doing short films of some kind or shorts of like, to me, um, it's really important to me that I, um, practice what I preach. So if I'm not getting something from Hollywood, I would like to try to start creating my own stuff. Like, you know what I mean? And, and I see a lot of people doing that now on YouTube, kind of taking their own route and, you know, you see Rocco doing it with his toys and, I want to do the same thing with movies. Like I have a lot, I have a binder this thick of movie ideas that I've just been accumulating over my entire life that I've never done anything with. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So like, so I would just love to kind of um, get into original content like that. Um, I did one 
kind of short film on my channel one time and um it wasn't even really planned it was like i was doing a skit and it just kind of blew up into like this 10 minute little tiny short film it's like a friday the 13th film basically um fan film essentially and i had such a blast doing it i was like man i i wasn't even really trying but i was like this is what i should be doing like you know what i mean like mm -hmm. it was almost like it was my calling like I, i've tried to make a film twice in my life and it didn't work out really either time but it's not stopping me because I know I could use YouTube to kind of like use it as a platform to do something like that later on. So, and I didn't have this platform before. So, but yeah, that's definitely my biggest goal. Right now, is to just, yeah. Just be more creative. Yeah. <clears throat> well, sounds good, man. Sounds good. So is mm -hmm. there anything besides, you know, your YouTube or anything you want to plug real quick? Uh, no. Yeah. Just, uh, if anything, just, if you're interested and you haven't already, please just come subscribe. Uh, yeah, check out some of my videos and definitely leave comments. That always helps. Uh, the YouTube algorithm is really bad right now. <laughs> so it usually is. It's hard to get views on, on there, but comments definitely help. So, um, yeah, any support would be greatly appreciated. Um, and thanks for having me on, of course. That that, that, that was great. I really appreciate that. And I appreciate everybody right, in the chat. Having on. Them, so. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, so yes, on the road to 2K. Uh, no, I think we... Yeah, I think we covered everything pretty much. Yeah, I think we're good. Sounds good, man. Well, once again, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to come on the show and talk with me. I know this is a little different. I mean, well, I guess not too different for you. You talked with Rocco, who's all toys and stuff. Yeah. So it's kind of similar, you know, and I figured, you know, all the toys that people collect and stuff come from movie franchises and whatnot. So it, right. there's a connection there regardless, you know, no between doubt. the movies and, you know, the toys. So I figured having a movie reviewer would be – anything kind of like disjointed or disconnected from, you know, toys and toy collectors and stuff like that. So thank no, you. No, 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 man. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And uh, yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, man. Well, I'll go ahead and let you go. Enjoy the rest of your night. And yeah, thank you for joining me. And if you ever want to come on the show again, you're more than welcome to you and Rocco. Are All right, welcome. Cool. Yeah, definitely. I definitely will. Yeah, this was fun. All right, man. Take it easy. Have a great rest of your night. All right, man. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me on this week's episode of Coffee and Toys. Thank you so much once again to this week's guest, Real Shift, Joe. I really do appreciate him taking time out of his busy day to come on to the show. <clears throat> Excuse me. And thank you for all of you that commented, liked, and, you know, we're here during the live stream. Thank you if you're watching the podcast, the replay uh, at a later time. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. Uh, next week, there will be no show. I am going on vacation for my birthday, so I won't be around. Although I may do a surprise, spontaneous coffee and toys live. Not too sure yet. Maybe depending on if I have the time, if I remember to do it. Uh, so stay tuned for that. But in terms of scheduled guests, nothing so far. Uh, but come back May 4th, Star Wars Day, where I will be back for episode 14 of Coffee and Toys Live with Can't Kill Chewy. If you don't know who Can't Kill Chewy is, he is a YouTuber that puts out a lot of great top 10 lists in regards to Star Wars Black Series figures, vintage collection figures, and stuff like that. Definitely check out his videos. They're very entertaining. They're very informative. But on top of that, if you follow him on Instagram, he's kind of like a toy shiz. He updates you on pre-orders, reveals, releases, stuff that's going up uh, you know, online and stuff like that. So definitely check him out if you want to stay up to date on new releases and all that great stuff. So looking forward to talking to him May 4th for episode 14 of Coffee and Toys. So with that being said, guys, thank you so much. If you haven't already, please subscribe to me over on YouTube at Cool Figures. If you enjoy unboxings, check me out over on TikTok at Cool Figures. Check out my other uh, toy photography page, Epic Shots by Cool Figures, where I post my more thought out, planned out, more edited pics. And of course, if you haven't already followed me here on Instagram at Cool Figures. As always, I've been your host, Jesse the Batman Girl, aka the Buff Collector. As always, have a great fucking day. Thank you so much for sticking to the end of this video. If you enjoyed those pics, you can find the full images over on Instagram at Cool Figures. And I do also have a separate Instagram account for my more thought out, planned out, more edited pics called Epic Shots by Cool Figures. Check it out. If you like what you see, leave me a follow there as well. And if you guys like unboxings, check me out over on TikTok at Cool Figures. That's where I post all of my unboxings. And check me out every Sunday for Coffee and Toys, a weekly Toy News Toy Talk podcast where we will go over all the latest and great toy news, reveals, pre-orders, weekly toy haul, and so much more. And join me every Wednesday over on Instagram for Coffee and Toys Live where I will speak to a new guest every week about toys, toy hunting, toy photography, 
and so much more. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to listen to me talk about toys. I really do appreciate it.